Hello, and welcome to something that is not the longest game of all time. <laughs> I'm here once again with Ezio. Hi, Ezio. Hello, hello. And we are commentating the Nexus Season 5 Grand Final. This one's limited to 10 years, so we don't have to commentate it for, what, 10 <laughs> weeks? We should be able to get this whole thing in a single video. It's incredible. Whoa. Yep. Um, so, uh, a few background things on this game. Uh, Nexus is one of the major online tournaments that's cross-site. There's really two big ones, the Online Diplomacy Championship and Nexus. Uh, Nexus finals are limited to 1910. So, at the end of 1910, whoever is in the lead on Supply Centers wins. And... If there's a tie, um, it depends on the order in which they chose their powers. They used a thing called the Paris Method. I'm not going to go over that here. Uh, there is a good video on the Diplomacy Broadcast Network, which actually they recorded the process of these players picking their powers. Um, so I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to find out more about it. Uh, as we can see here in France, we've got a player called Otto van Spankentukers. <laughs> Um, in Germany, Kutusov, in England, Tangian, uh, in Russia, Ewok, in Turkey, Konk, he may be familiar to you if you've seen previous Nexus uh, commentaries, in Austria, EVR, 1022, and in Italy, Positom, who is also, who, the, he has also been in a previous uh, Nexus final. There is one other Nexus finalist here who you may not immediately recognize, and that is Ewok over there in Russia. Um, he is a an alias of another player called Village Idiot, and no one knew this until this final. <laughs> so <laughs> he managed to qualify under an anonymous identity, which was quite interesting. But all of the players knew who one another were by this point. Um, right, I... Th think that's about all I need to say in, in preparation of this. Ezio, shall we jump right in? We'll have to see some moves. Yep, and, well, we've got some moves here. What stands out to you immediately? Um, Venice to Trieste. This right here. Always a fun one. And It's usually expected to see in the fall, if they're doing the meta alone, where Austria gives... Um, Trieste over to Italy, but when they when Italy makes this move in the spring, it opens up some very punishing tactics for Italy against Austria if they choose to go that route. Although they did move Rome down to Apulia, right? So it's not like overtly aggressive towards the Austrian. It could well not be necessarily. It it is probably agreed, but if you're making this deal as Austria. If, if the agreement is to simply give Trieste away to Italy, if the agreement is a key Lepanto, which looks plausible considering Vienna to Budapest instead of Vienna to Galicia, um, then it, you have to make this move. But when, if Italy is just taking Trieste as the agreement and they make this move in the spring, you are opening the door to many potential uh, harassment opportunities by this Italian army. Such as, like, cutting Serbia? Stuff like this? Yeah, tapping Serbia while letting Greece... Or while letting um, Turkey know, so Turkey can then tap Greece. And then you denied Austria all build to no one. Well, hey, even supporting uh, Bulgaria to Serbia would be an interesting one, right? I don't think I've ever seen that. Um, yeah, but... then you open the door to all of these possibilities. So, just the word of warning to all of you Austrians out there... Even if you want Italy to take Trieste, make sure they do it in the fall, not the spring. Yeah, and I mean, I, th I feel like we've discussed this before, but the reason you'd want to give Italy Trieste, this obviously looks pretty overtly aggressive, um, is just because Italy only gets one build in 01, quite often they need, like, th this enables them to do something like Ionia into Aegean without taking Tunis. Uh, it also just makes... I mean, it's it's like a peace offering, right? <laughs> it's basically saying, hey, Italy, you know, you don't have to attack me. I'm going to give you one thing anyway, and then we can continue working together past that point. I won't be able to build any fleets, and you'll be, like, fine to continue working with me <laughs> and getting your yeah, builds. Yeah, not being able to build the fleets is a key thing um, 
is the key for me as Italy. I want there to be as few fleets in the south as possible, which is why when I play Italy, I have so many issues with Turkey, because Turkey naturally wants to build fleets as well. And if I can take Trieste, I've ensured that Austria can't build any fleets, and that gives me a huge degree of safety. I usually find a way to get Greece disbanded anyways, just the, uh, excuse me, the fleet Trieste that usually ends up in Greece. I usually get that disbanded anyways to give me the added bit of security, but if Austria can't build a fleet, Austria has a very hard time ever attacking Italy. Yep, and that's exactly what makes the alliance more stable, although it is obviously worse for Austria than if they kept Trieste. <laughs> uh, yeah. But that's kind of the, the counterpoint. Why does Austria want to do it? Well, if Austria still has Trieste, then the potential Italian stab is actually more potent. Because there are more centers near Italy for Italy to take. Once Italy's already taken Trieste, then it's already sort of in your calculations, you're not relying on that fly center for a unit anymore. Italy can't do too much damage to you uh, as easily. Yeah, I think I get that. I think uh, I would also say that more applies if they vacate Trieste with the army again, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. In O2, when the army's still there, it doesn't matter much. But usually you see Trieste move to Tyrolia or something yep. and, and get out of there, usually. Yeah. Uh, right. So um, Other than that, the whole game is bog standard. I mean, we see a demilitarized zone in Galicia too, right? Um, yeah, but like, so... we, we talked about that when talking, talking about the key, man. Yeah, the, I mean, it's a very standard board, yeah. This French move so over here. Here's the, uh, here is the question, Captain Mim. You're in England in this game, <laughs> and you don't trust anything that Italy, Austria, or Russia are telling you. Do you think this is going to be a key Lepanto? Oh, boy. I think it's like... <laughs> is there a... <laughs> benefit to Key Lepanto in here over just giving Trieste to Italy because the problem with the Key Lepanto is you need to find somewhere to stick this army from Serbia, right? So the Key Lepanto means Trieste goes through to Serbia after this turn. Um, you would probably want to do something like Albania supports Serbia to Greece or Budapest supports Serbia to Romania, something like that. Um, if you do the support down to Greece, you're just trapping your, your fleet in Albania. I really don't like that. <laughs> Over just giving the Italian uh, Trieste. And if you're supporting it into Romania, you don't really have a guarantee that it's going to work. Um, so... It, you don't think that Austria would go for Aquila Ponto in this position? <laughs> what I, I think they might. Um... If they do, it will be more for the whole, whole you know, we did a Kilopanto in a top-level game type thing, rather than this is actually the best thing I can do strategically. Uh, Beautiful. It's odd, right? Because I really, really enjoy the Kilopanto, but I know that it's pretty terrible, and I think it became even worse after giving the Italian Trieste became normalized, because now, like... This essentially does the same thing that putting the army in Serbia does, um, except you, you've left the Italian the, the center that's more useful to them, I guess, and that they can get out of more easily without getting completely tangled up in your units. So, so I think this shows the key difference. In, in my mind, what makes the Kila Ponto the Kila Ponto was Ionian to Aegean, Albanian to Ionian. I thought that was the key oh, that's um, interesting. essence of the Key Lepanto, is that you give Italy the build in Trieste or Serbia, and in exchange, Italy does not take Tunis in 01, still gets the build, and you are in Aegean so fast. That's yeah. what I thought the essence of the key was. I didn't really consider Albania to Ionian. I don't know if that's a... Like, I've definitely seen the whole um, hyper-advanced... Italian fleet thing where you just go straight into Aegean. Usually that's what happens when you uh, take Trieste like this. But it would probably... This is actually a decent situation for doing the whole Albania to Ionian thing. Um, because like really you don't need that fleet for anything else. You can push the Italian army in Trieste into Serbia uh, with 
Budapest and bring the army down into Greece as long as the Turk doesn't bounce you there. So, uh huh. It's an interesting idea. I'd actually really like to see that. <laughs> Just to see how and it this, Is this out. a non anonymous game or is this an anonymous game? It's a non anonymous game. Um, and Balki, this player in Turkey, won the previous event, right? He did not. He, uh, he did a. Well, he did get to the finals in the previous event. He did not win it. Um, we have a commentary on this channel, I think, but it was from a while ago. Uh, well, but so he, is, he, is renowned, game, but... he is renowned for being very, very strong, and he does get into finals quite a lot. Um, so, yep. I'm just saying, man, if there's a time you're going to pull out the Aquila Ponto in a finals, this would be a great time for it. I could equally see just, like, Albania to Greece with support from Budapest plus the move to Aegean and keeping the army in Trieste, right? It's less interesting, but it kind of does a similar thing. It, it keeps Italy a little bit more safe in that you haven't asked Austria to move into the Ionian Sea. Yep. <laughs> uh, man. I would love to see, like, the Austrian do that and then just walk into Tunis or something. It's like, hey, it's mine now. <laughs> it would be a terrible idea, but uh, it would be rather I'm funny. I'm not convinced it's that terrible an idea. There's probably a, a specific tactical situation you could get where, for whatever reason, you end up taking, like, Trieste back and you convoy into Naples or something, and then and then Italy's just screwed. <laughs> um, but... Well, no. So I assume that when you do this um, thing with the Austrian fleet and the Ionian, you build an Italian fleet behind it, and then you try and dislodge that so the Austrian fleet... Wait, no. That's that's the wrong thing I'm thinking of, right? That's the uh, blue water. Um, uh -huh. And you don't need to do that here because you're already in Aegean. So you want Absolutely. to support the Austrian fleet through and then push Naples into Ionian, but if Austria just doesn't want to do that, then you are a little bit screwed, yeah. Especially yep. if uh, Turkey taps like Aegean, um, and you. I'm just saying that would be hilarious. I want to do that at some point, but <laughs> so the the best thing about getting your fleet into Tunis is just going to be that it it's going to be behind the Italian lines all the time. <laughs> How are they ever going to get rid of that? Uh, they make you just... lose enough centers, you have to disband it. That's the only way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> Anything for us to talk about in the West? I don't think so. I think the West is boring as pie. Yeah, I mean, the support into Burgundy is not 100% normal, but it's definitely a common move, uh, just saying. It's like, isn't it like the third most popular thing to do with? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> like... Yeah. The main disadvantage to it, of course, is that you can only take Spain with the army now. Well, if you want to it's take advantage, both quote, Portugal and, and Spain. But uh, really, there's not that much difference between putting the fleet in Spain or Portugal. The main thing is, if you're in Portugal, you probably move back out to Mid-Atlantic Ocean. That sets you up for a more flexible position anyway, so that's kind of fine. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I want to see I want to see these fall moves. Okay. I'm, I'm really so excited for the fall of 01, but I really want to see Italy just, just punish Austria here. Alright, well, let's see. No. Oh. Wait, it's a double Italian build here. Um... They did yeah. not go for the hyper advance into a GM thing. Yeah, if they're, I, I think this just makes sense. If you're not going for, um, for the key or whatever, if you're if you're not planning on having Albania backfill into Ionian, I don't think it makes much sense to have Italy push into a GM like that. I mean, but I think it's still quite strong. It means that you don't have to like hammer against the Aegean if if uh, Turkey brings the fleet out to Constantinople or something similar. Um, the big move that I notice two big moves um, to keep our focus on the east because the east is the interesting part Constantinople, the army moving back into Smyrna blocking the potential build there yep. means that Italy can choose to move into eastern med with his fleet guaranteed um, in exchange Turkey is able to build a fleet in Constantinople and potentially force the Black Sea, but that's a potentially big risk. 
Yeah, it's an odd uh, decision here moving back. It, I mean, Constantinople is the more flexible option in terms of alliances, I guess. It gives you a lot more flexibility against the Russian, but right here it looks like... I mean, it looks like Turkey might be <laughs> needing Russian assistance soon, um, given the Italian-Austrian working together at the moment. If this yeah. move convinces the Italian to attack the Austrian, it's probably incredible. Um, <laughs> because you'd be more likely to attack the Austrian as the Italian if you were seeing the Turks set up to attack the Russian, right? More likely to attack the Austrian, yes, but to say I'm going to go from 2% to 3%, it's a 50% increase, but not mm -mm. particularly important, because in this position, I'm if I'm the Italian player, I'm going to move into Eastern meta every time. Um, especially in the current meta, especially with the not-anonymous nature of this game, I'm like, sorry. <laughs> yep, Conk is a dangerous player, he's got to go. <laughs> Uh, and especially in a 1910 game with Turkey, Turkey is always going to be one of those powers that if you're an Eastern power and you're doing quite well, um, and you have, you know, this standoff with the West at the end of the game for whoever gets the most centers, Turkey is going to be the, one of those ones that will always be a pain in the back unless they're, uh, completely eliminated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As we saw the, in the, the last Nexus game. Sorry, go yeah, ahead. as you saw in the last Nexus game. In the West, we have um, Murr supporting Yorkshire to Belgium, which is a big deal because we see Burgundy attempt to move into Belgium. Ooh. Yep. Do we think this is an EG? I mean, you would think so, right, with the support there. They also, <laughs> like, Germany also bounces uh, Russia out of Sweden in the north, which is a pretty sure sign of uh, England-German. <laughs> like coalition here um that's fantastic for England like all around you you really like seeing this bounce in Sweden as England because it means that this Russian fleet is not your problem anymore um it can now go and annoy Germany or it can go back and sit in St. Petersburg but it's never going to be able to threaten Norway unless the German puts it in uh, so yeah like absolutely great uh, start for England here and clearly someone was lying to the French player in order to get them to go to Belgium yeah either Germany was offering support into Belgium or England was offering support into Belgium or it's just the best disguised western triple of all time with the <laughs> French fleet in Portugal instead of Spain's south coast with the British army convoyed to Belgium I, look, we might be an even better disguised Western Triple with a fleet in Brest and another fleet building Kiel. It would be amazing. Oh boy. Yeah, this does not look like a Western Triple. <laughs> this is for sure. Um, but yeah, it, interestingly, like, I feel like when you play, or at least when I play EGs, I much prefer to put the army in Norway rather than Belgium. Um, because Germany is going to get their armies on the French front pretty quickly regardless, and having an army adjacent to St. Petersburg is always helpful uh, in attacking it. But, I mean, this was the only way you could do it uh, with, with North Sea, right? With uh, moving to Yorkshire at the start. So, I guess it's fine. I'm pretty... I'm pretty optimistic for England's position here. Yeah, I mean, uh, is there anything much to talk about here, or shall we just go ahead? Let's just see what these builds are, and that's going to really inform the next many years of this game. Yep. All right, let's go ahead to winter of 1901. Double fleet from Italy. Yeah, fleet for last fleet, Kiel. And that's a lot <laughs> fleet liverpool fleet london fleet keel <laughs> yeah, fleet Con. this is wow that's a heavy fleet board yeah it's like in insane i don't know that i've ever seen this many fleet builds in 01 we're missing the russian fleet st petersburg north coast or something <laughs> but yeah so I expect Fleet Kiel is something that England knows about and is fine with, because it's almost certainly going to Baltic Sea to take Sweden. 
Yeah. I mean, Although that's just that's fine. Like as so, England, you would probably want them to build Fleet Berlin instead, just to ensure that it's going that way. But of course, but you're going to talk to Germany, and Germany's going to say, "Yeah, but I'm talking to France, and if I build Fleet Berlin, it kind of put lets the cat out of the bag, and so I'm going to build Fleet Kiel. You can trust me. I'm going to the Baltic Sea anyways." But like, yeah, which is that's just it's okay. As Germany, I'm not sure what I would do here. I think I would make the move into the Baltic Sea. I think I I do want to just take Sweden. Um, I just also want to take Belgium, but I'm pretty sure if I take Belgium, then England and France are going to get their shit sorted out real fast. I mean, can you not justify taking Belgium regardless by like saying I'll push you ahead? Uh, I mean, you can. You can. The problem is, if you're justifying it while taking Sweden, it's like I'm building two and you're disbanding. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that's probably <laughs> true. That's what's so awkward about this Belgium move, right? You kind of have to give England Sweden if you're going to take Belgium off of them, uh, and you probably end up blowing up their army regardless because pushing it ahead is like not the easiest thing to do. Um, yeah, you need to do, like. I think tactically here, if I am Germany and interested in the EG, which I am, I would ask for Ruhr to for a B Belgium to support Ruhr into Burgundy. Have Munich support that as well. Holland to Ruhr. This minimizes the pressure on Burgundy. We're guaranteed the capture, and then England is going to take the English Channel, and then hopefully England can support themselves into Picardy with the English Channel and Burgundy. It's super unlikely to succeed, and just, like, we're not going to make any progress ever, but it's it's what I, you kind of got to do. And as Germany, I'm fine with this, because I'm taking Sweden, I don't care. I'm getting my build, and I can sort things out in the spring of next year, once we've got England fully committed to this war against France. That makes sense. Uh, something interesting in the south, though, the number of Italian fleets means at least one of them has to be going west, right? There's no way you build three fleets and send them all to the east. They just don't fit. Um, you know, you say that, I'm not convinced. I know you're, you are right that with these fleets, Fleet Rome almost certainly is going west. But I have played too many games with Italy's who just don't do that. To just to just move it into Serenian Sea and then they support Hold Ionian. Or they move it into Ionian when Ionian goes to Eastern Med and then Eastern Med supports Ionian to Achia and then it backfills into Ionian. Mm. Like if, That just feels so like bad though. It feels so wrong, but I've seen it happen a lot, and I've done it myself. So I'm like eh, I'm not I'm not convinced. Yeah. I'm not convinced at all. Uh, I think I could see this fleet going west just to help prop up against the England Germany if the England Germany is making significant progress. Um, no, and if you move Trieste into Tyrolia, you're really safe then from any attacks. Okay, okay. Yeah, but I guess we'll see. It is possible it goes to the east and just doesn't get involved. And it just does nothing. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it doesn't yeah. do anything once it's in the east. It just it's kind of there, and you're like, oh. It it sits around threatening Greece, right? <laughs> So you and threatening a, threatening a convoy to Albania, maybe it gives you a, a like a, a reasonably better attack against the Austrian at some point. But it's still. I want to be clear. I don't think that this is good. I think, in fact, I've been in this position as Italy a couple times now, and I'm pretty sure that Italy should always build a second army here, just as a rule. But that's my own personal philosophy. I or my second been... army, I mean a third army. Yep. In Venice. Just. Army <laughs> well, Venice, it could guaranteed. Be army like, you could... could be Army Rome, but it should be Army Venice. Yeah. Because then you can move it to Piedmont if you want to pressure the French, and the French don't see it coming a million miles away. Um, you can move it into Tyrolia, and then you can move it into Bohemia or something. Or you can, like, tell Russia and Turkey, hey, I'm totes going to just kill the Austrian here. Don't mind my fleet in the Eastern Med. Yep. I don't know. That's, I mean... that's my personal philosophy, but it's not... I, I guess don't think the big fleet problem, is necessarily bad. The big problem Sorry, is ahead. just that um, the the fleets can't take all that much. <laughs> you, the third fleet is not going to be useful because it, it doesn't really get you anything. If you want to take things off the Turk, you have to Lepanto in the first place, which takes up one of your armies usually. 
you can do it occasionally without the little Panto, but even then, it's slow, it doesn't get you sensors very fast. If you build a second fleet here, you're sort of committing yourself into this whole, I need to take something on the coast to get my next build, uh, no matter what, and then that's difficult to do. <laughs> right? Whereas if you put the army down, at least you've got options. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like the army build, but again, I don't think this is like the worst build in the game. Yeah. So, Fleet Liverpool, though, when you combine it with Fleet Realm, maybe, yeah, we're just going to see this Italian-English coalition where they just smash all of their fleets into France and, and make it happen. Possible. I was thinking more along the lines of Italy propping up France, but uh, just because if you wanted to attack France, surely you need, you need Army Venice at the same time. I'm um, not necessarily convinced. Um, so we agreed that Army Trieste needs to get out of there. We don't want it sitting around. And Army Trieste can make it to Piedmont at the same time that Fleet Rome makes it into Gulf of Leon and or Western Med. That's true. So it, I think obviously then you're vacating Trieste, but I don't, I don't really think you need to be in Trieste, especially not if Austria and Russia are working with you against Turkey. You really can then bring Trieste out to the West. You can also, like... Sorry. You can also hit the, uh, the the French player relatively by surprise if you do the whole Trieste to Tyrolia thing, plus uh, Rome to Tyrrhenian, because both of those are explainable as not anti-French, right? Um, Certainly. Tyrrhenian is the only place this, French, this fleet can go. Uh, Tyrolia is like a very flexible position for the army to be. And then you just jump into Piedmont and Lyon and hope that the French player is completely caught off guard and you can take Marseille on the next turn. Uh, yep. Or you go into Western Med and move your army North Africa, Tunis to North Africa, because then you tell everyone, hey, I'm convoying into Spain. Yep, but then, like, how do you get into Spain properly? <laughs> Don't tell silly. anyone. That's quite difficult. Anyway, shall we go ahead to the spring of 1902? Let's do it. Let's see some moves. All right. Uh, spring 02. Okay. Uh, well, we've got that free move to the Eastern Mediterranean that you were mentioning before. Trieste to Venice, not Trieste to Tyrolia. More pro-German? Yeah, more pro-German. Uh, and, I mean, there's not a lot that takes you by surprise in the south, but the Russian is helping the Austrian out against the Turk, which is just going to be painful for the Turkish player. Yeah, and keeping Alicia DMZ is... Really bad news bears for uh, for Turkey. Yep, just a very bad situation all around. He wasn't able to force the Black Sea. He had to bounce there. He went to Armenia, which is an interesting thing to do. I suppose it makes sense if you're anti-Russian, but it's just he kind of needs that army in the south now, <laughs> and he had to like go into Aegean to try and defend himself and still wasn't able to defend himself because he uh, because the move was to the east of the Mediterranean here. Um, and did he choose to take Bulgaria off the board rather than retreating it into Constantinople? It looks like he did, yeah. Oof. I wonder why that is. He got tilted and MMR'd and <laughs> still going to get any the rest of the game? I think that's unlikely. I'm fairly certain, like, I don't know 100%, but I'm fairly certain this game had grace periods enabled, so if he actually just missed the phase, it would not have disbanded, he would have gotten a chance to enter that order regardless. So, this was a purposeful... He disband. chose to disband that. I mean, look, technically he's not going to lose any more centers this turn, and he was probably losing the Aegean Sea anyways... And now he can move Aegean back into Constantinople, and when Bulgaria taps Constantinople, even if the Austrian and the Italian attack Aegean with strength 2, and Armenia covers Smyrna, then his fleet gets disbanded. If his army, however, had moved into Constantinople, his fleet would be disbanded, and there would be three units still, so he would not get a chance to rebuild it. Whereas now, he can still build a fleet in Constantinople, and he can keep his two-fleet, one-army composition. Oh, that's smart. I would not have thought of this. Um, the 
The other benefit, I suppose, is that now Austria is not expecting any tap on Bulgaria. So they have the ability to go for Romania if they wish. That's uh, true, and because Russia didn't even move into Ukraine, he can't hold Romania. Yep. It's all choices by the Russian here. I, I don't really get it, because you kind of need to get an army in Sevastopol anyway, right? If you're going to crack the Turk. Um, yeah, I think Warsaw to Ukraine would have made more sense. Yep. And then, I mean, if you're planning on pressuring the north, you probably also wanted to move Warsaw to Silesia, because then you can tell Germany, hey, Germany, why why are you working with, with England here? Don't give me Sweden, and I don't tap Berlin or something. I don't know. Yeah, I think annoying the German more than uh, <laughs> they've already... Well, I suppose if they're already at war with you, there's not that much of a Yeah, they're already going to... Right? And, like, look, they're committed against France. They've got their units out here, and so you can put your army in Silesia and be like, hey, buddy, what you do? I think Warsaw should have moved to Ukraine or Silesia. I think Galicia, if you are a very risky Russian player, I would not recommend Galicia. But I think Silesia or Ukraine made the most sense. But he decided to keep his options as wide open as possible. Yep. Well, guess we'll see if that pays off. The... Uh... I mean, the moves in the north are pretty much what we expected, right? England trying to put the German into Sweden. Um, and as you said, supporting Ruhr into Burgundy just made the most sense. Holland didn't move out. So that might be a little bit of a distrust there from the German towards the English player. Um, yeah. But, like, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. France is going to take a while to crack regardless, but it looks like they are in a bad spot here. <laughs> So, okay, something about the French defense here that I do want to point out. Spain moved to Gascony, and I am so happy because I have seen so many French players in this position move Spain to Marseille, and then when Burgundy has an option to retreat, Burgundy retreats to Paris, leaving Gascony vacant. Now, if you want to see why this is a bad idea, go watch our review of the longest game and remember what happened to France. Because Gascony was vacant and they lost Burgundy, their whole position took years to consolidate. I'm talking like three years or something before they really got everything fixed. But like this, because they're in Gascony and Marseille and Picardy, they can cover Paris and attack Burgundy, and they're still fine. They're not really in danger of losing anything. Yep. This is just a much better position than having a gap in Gascony. Um... It like it's a really odd choice of how do you choose to defend if you uh, end up with no army in Gascony. The the one I think we saw in the um in the longest game, it was a long time ago now, so I might be wrong, but he self bounced himself in Gascony, right? Was that correct? <laughs> I, I feel like that was what he did. And if you if you get stuck doing that, like making sure that he can't take Gascony by self bouncing it, then you're dedicating two of your units to protecting that one territory, and they can't attack Burgundy, so you're never going to make any progress. Um, which is, yeah, yeah exactly the problem. Uh, so this is a significantly better position than that would have been. Uh... I mean, obviously the French position is still false, right? Um, once the key is going to be mid-Atlantic Ocean. What's going to happen is England is going to get their army into Picardy at some point. And once the English army gets into Picardy, the English army in Picardy can cut Brest. And Brest is the unit that is necessary to support, hold the Mid-Atlantic Ocean, stopping Irish Sea and English Channel from going in. Now, Brest will cut, will cut the English Channel, and so Irish Sea will need to be the one supporting English Channel to Mid-Atlantic Ocean, and the North Sea needs to cover English Channel. It's, it's a pain, it's a huge hassle, but... France does get broken here. The good news for France is in that turn, when England finally breaks the French position, they will be vacating, opening themselves up to a truly devastating German stab by taking Belgium and the North Sea in the same move, as long as they are in Denmark and in Holland. So from the French position, you play this way, you make it as hard as possible for them to take things from you, and it's the only way they can make progress requires one side to expose themselves from a stab on the other. The truly ideal defense against two powers. And I expect to see that from this French position. I do not think this is going to work out for England and Germany in the long run. Yeah, well, uh, I guess we'll see. Um, 
Is there anything else to talk about here? I'm going to take it back. This is all assuming Italy doesn't send their units straight to the west. If Italy, like, puts a unit in western Med and Piedmont, France is just cooked. Yeah. Excuse me. I wanted to make that. I, I need to put that amendment on it. <laughs> yep. That's fair. If you've got three powers attacking you, there's very little you can do to, uh, to save yourself. Even if, well, I mean, you can try and say, okay, I'm going to give centers to one of you unless the other one's stab or something, but... Especially with Italy, Germany, England, it's very difficult to do that because everyone's going to make gains off of you. Uh, yeah, it's real tough. Yep. So, shall we go ahead to the awesome? Let's do it. Okay. Fall 1902. Oh. Man. What is going... Oh, okay. So, Austrian stab on Italy in the south. Yeah. I was like, how did that convoy fail to work? It's because of that successful uh, Turkish stab. I wonder if this was, like, conditional on Constantinople being disbanded or something similar. But... That's an interesting one. Is this going to work out for the Austrian? Because usually Austria really, really wants Turkey dead in these 1910 games. Because... Yeah, it's difficult to envision a world where they stick together for too long. I think Italy is really regretting this um, this move to Gulf of Leon. Yep. I mean, it wasn't even followed up by Piedmont, which is odd. Uh, but... It turns out to be slightly better for them that it wasn't followed up to Piedmont, right? <laughs> well, maybe not, actually, because you might just want to try and blitz down the French to get the centers and then hold the... Uh, use them to hold your homeland, but even then, it's just... Yeah, they would have... Italy would have zero armies left to defend themselves. Yeah, that would not be um, good. With the army of Venice and Piedmont, Austria just walks into Venice and Rome and says, oh, thanks. So... Yeah, you can't do that. Hmm. Well, it's an interesting stab for sure. Would you have taken it as the Austrian if you were offered Not this by the Turk? Not in a million years. Just because it was a 1910 game, or? Yeah, the timing of this game, I just, I, I actually, I don't believe that the AT in this position is the best plan for Austria. I think Italy is so heavily committed to the Lepanto that. You're fine. Just let him put the army in Syria. Okay, that's great. Like, if you know that he's using Aegean to support you into the Ionian, you can have Bulgaria tap Constantinople, and you can have Serbia tap Bulgaria. You can just keep the pressure on him. And if he stays true to his word, as he did here, then he doesn't cover Khan, and you just you get your plus two anyways. But you keep Italy on side. Yeah. That would have actually been huge here, being able to go bull to con, uh, sir to bull. But, although the Austrian would probably still have only gotten one build, because I don't see where Budapest goes. I guess it follows up into Serbia, maybe? But, yeah. in that case, Austria is going to have to make a decision about who's stabbed very, very soon after that, because uh, I really doubt that Russia and Italy continue working with you if you've just gotten a double build after, like... Well, oh, walking Turkey into is, the Turkish centers. Yeah, Turkey. Is yeah, but in this position, them. if we assume that we let Italy get the convoy into Syria, then you can just say, "Hey, you're going to take Smyrna. You're getting your stuff. Once you get your army in Smyrna, I'll support you into Ankh, and we call it a day. And then you go after Russia and you move on with your life." Yeah, and there's not really much what Russia would have been able to do about it, right? They don't have the units. <laughs> nope, this and is... Warsaw is just not in position to impact it. Like I think. I don't know. I, I don't think I would have accepted this deal as Austria, but obviously this is a fine position for Austria. He is building too. He's going to be the biggest power on the board. I just... Turkey's not going to stay on side. Like, Italy, he's, Italy's going to disband Eastern Med here almost every time, yep. because Italy has to disband something, and then he's going to convoy Tunis back to Rome or something and he's going to be able to cover Tunis, so he's not really in danger of losing anything else to you, and suddenly Turkey's back to being at your back. This is why the meta is so anti-Turkish in these modern days, is because Turkey is a big threat to the powers in the East. Yep. 
No, I mean, Austria here, where are they going to go past this point? They can. I mean, they're going to support themselves in Tetrolia and try to take Venice. Yeah, I feel like they can get into one because they can take a stab at, uh, at Tunis this turn just to prevent it being convoyed back over to Rome. If it does get convoyed back over to the Rome, you at least get Tunis. But past that point, it's difficult to see how you're going to make any progress, at least fast enough that the Turkish threat in the south doesn't uh, just, well, I mean, <laughs> become a problem. Yep. As to the Tunis thing, um, I believe that is solved by this fleet, Gulf of Leon. Because Gulf of Leon moves to Western Med while you convoy Tunis away. And then you use your fleet in Tyrrhenian Sea and Western Med to recapture Tunis. Yeah, that's true. So I don't even think Italy is in, lo is in danger of losing Tunis here. Man, and if you go into Naples as well, you just get knocked out by Roman uh, Tyrrhenian. By convoy so to Rome. Yep. That's actually probably better going to Naples because then at least they have to choose between retaking Naples or hitting uh, or, or saving Venice. Well, they can't even save Venice. You guarantee Venice. Uh, yes, by taking Naples, if we go for the convoy back in Rome, Venice does fall with what it says you've described, and assuming Germany doesn't mess with you with Munich. Yep. Yes, that is correct. But I don't like moving your fleet, your one and only fleet from. Ionian to Naples, it just feels bad, because Ionian's yeah. such a better place. But it's the move you gotta make, and Ionian's a good place because it does all these things, but if you don't make any benefit from it. The thing is, at this point, as soon as Eastern Med gets taken off the board, which seems ridiculously likely, then Russia looks at the Austrian that's huge and just stabbed Italy, and it says, oh no, okay Turkey, I'm gonna stop bouncing you out of the Black Sea. I'm we, we I'm not going there anymore. We can work this out, and then your Austrian position just crumbles. Yep. Um. I'm, yeah. I'm terrified of this Austrian position, but like, we'll see. Maybe his negotiations have worked out such that he knows that Russia is not doing anything, and if so, he's fine. Maybe his he's <laughs> confident that Balky's not going to stab. <laughs> Famous last words. Yep. I think Balky is even more bloodthirsty than I am. Well, I mean, I guess we'll see. This is He's certainly very good with his words if he's managed to convince Austria to take this attack. Um, if we look in the north as well, we see that France's defense actually held out perfectly, right? They yes. did everything exactly correct that they needed to do. They could have just left Paris completely open, um, but really... The, like, I this, think it's safer. Yeah, this was as good as it was going to get, and even if Piketty got taken off the board here by, say, Burgundy getting supported up, they could have immediately re rebuilt it in Paris in the fall. So, yep, the only real risk was Irish Sea supporting English Channel to Mid-Atlantic Ocean. Um, but, like, you gotta have some risks. There's a million units against you, and I believe this was definitely the best one. Yep. So congratulations to France on that front for preventing their uh, <laughs> demise for a little while longer. Um, well, I mean, preventing any attack against them working for a little yeah, while. Yeah, but Italy's forced away, right? He's probably doing okay. Yep. All right. Well, shall we move to the winter? Let's do it. Okay. Well, winter hey, we 1902. <laughs> really? Yeah, and we've got that German army... Generally, right, twenty bucks in... convoy to Livonia. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> uh... Everyone sees convoy to Livonia right now. It's just screaming, <laughs> it's screaming to us. He's getting convoy to Livonia. Yep. Because that's why you build it in Kiel, right? You're not moving to Ruhr. Oh, I'm farther away from you, Russia. I'm not attacking you. Please ignore me. I... <laughs> Whatever. I love it. Yep. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, so the generally when you see an England-Germany alliance, Germany will stay on two fleets. You don't really want them to see it to to build any more fleets as England, and I think you don't really want them. <laughs> yeah, to you... This is true. <laughs> you talk to France and say, "I'm sorry, Skagrak's really nice this time of year. I'm backing out of the Irish Sea." No, 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 no. You can kick him out of Burgundy. You want support in Burgundy? I'll support Marseille to Burgundy any day of the week. Please, please, I beg you. Yep. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> yeah, you are saying please don't build any more fleets to Germany. And, yeah, I mean, Germany's still saying. If you ask me nicely. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, we see uh, Eastern Meg get taken off the board, which was 
we discussed the most likely build for this band for Italy. Yep. Uh, did you want to do power rankings here? I mean, yeah, I think it's it's too, right? The only time that we we got these power rankings. Okay. Um. So, I mean, in the south, it feels like Austria is the strongest power, but their position is so tenuous. Dude, I, I so don't want to be Austria right now. Yeah. I, I like. Okay, I take it back. If I am an Austria that is taking over the Austrian position, okay, I could play that position because I tell Italy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot, I'm a stupid, the guy who played before me had no idea what he was doing, please, 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 we're, we're back on the same side. And then I believe that is a pitch that would work. I would give him back Trieste, and we move on with our lives. Mm. But, in this position, I do not expect this Austrian position to develop well. I expect it to develop, in fact, quite poorly. Uh, but, I don't know, man. He's still got to be the strongest position in the South, right? This is just... Yeah, I think I'd, like, I'd at least place Germany and England both above him, right? Sure. Which of Germany and England do you think is in the stronger position right now? Germany. Germany? Uh, Germany. Why? Mm, good question. I don't know. He's Germany. He's got six dots. England is five. That's a good reason. Yeah. I almost think uh, it's, it's because, like, Scandinavian progress is going to be made faster than progress against the French. And, and so Germany's going to have somewhere to go. Um, that's a good argument. I mean, Belgium is pretty exposed. If Germany wants it, he can probably take it pretty easily. But, like, again, that pisses off the French. So it's tough. Like, yeah, I think their positions are relatively equitable. I mean, that's the point of alliances, right? You don't want it to be one side as much stronger than the other, but... Yep. I don't know. I think Germany's position is a little better. Sue me. That's fair. Um, I guess then the question is, is France's position stronger than Austria's? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Look, I know France is a good power, all right? But France is literally under attack from the two people in the West as committed as they can possibly be. He's down a dot from Austria, and Austria has only one enemy who is explicitly attacked them right now. So Come on. Austria will go into third then. Yeah. Yeah. Austria is. I mean, I, I'm like. Again, I'm still thinking of putting Austria higher than this because, yeah, I don't like his position. I, I'm personally not a fan of it, but like. The fact, he is currently guaranteed to take Venice unless Germany specifically interferes with Tyrolia this turn. Because Ionian to Naples, while supporting himself into, into Tyrolia, and Venice is going to fall. Right? So, like, that's a big deal. It's hard to ignore that. The problem is, I look at Bulgaria, and I think, is that really strong? Well... He has potential to take Romania if he uses if if Turkey doesn't attack Bulgaria, then he's guaranteed to take Romania too. Austria is almost able to go to war with both Russia and Italy and win against both of them simultaneously. But that's then, a fantastic position. Then he has the Turk in the corner still, and it's like you do not want the Turk in the corner. When you're Austria and you when control Bulgaria and Greece and Turkey's in Aegean, yeah, I completely yeah. agree with you. It's, I just. <laughs> I, I think I'd keep them in third. I definitely wouldn't move them above England or Germany here. Just because they're sure. going to be at war with everyone. I don't see how Turkey stays on their side. You don't? You, you really? You're thinking that it's unlikely he does anything but, like, convoy smear to Greece for some reason? <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, then, I think a better question, though, would be Russia versus France. Yeah, because both are not in good spots. Um, Russia could be attacked by Austria kind of whenever, but also has the, the crutch there of the fact that Austria is going to be attacked by everyone else, probably. So Austria will yeah. want to keep them on side, right? Even if they could stab for Romania. They're just and presumably stay. Turkey is willing to move into Constantinople whenever and therefore keep pressure off of Russia and the Black Sea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I would rather play as France, France than Russia, personally. But I would always rather play as France than Russia. You give me like a <laughs> two center France in Portugal, Spain, versus a Russia who's on like 
this Russia, and I'm gonna be like, you know, France can come back. I've seen France claw back from crazy <laughs> positions, but yeah, I'm, I, I like France too much. Yeah, no, I think uh, I agree. I think the French position is better just because if England or Germany stab, you're in a fine spot as France, whereas as Russia, I don't really see where they're gonna go here. Bothnia is kind of useless. Um, even if they stabbed in conjunction with the English player, I don't think Bothnia would be very useful. Uh, the and in the south, you've kind of got nowhere. You can try and go against the Turk with Austrian assistance. That's probably what the Austrian wants you to do. It's it's not going to work because you get bounced out of Black Sea. Um, you can try oh, yeah, and right. go against the Austrians' <laughs> armies with just your two. That's not going to work. <laughs> Yeah, and you know you you can have the German throwing armies into Livonia in a second. It just doesn't look great. Um, yep, I think I'd rather be French than Russian, man. Yep, I think I'd agree. Uh, All right, now the real question: Turkey versus Italy. Yeah, I mean, and in my opinion, it's sorted in these tiers because of the center counts. Right, we have Austria at six, Germany and England at. Six and five, England's just position is nice in the corner and strong. Then Russia's a little below them, and then we have four and three, yeah. which is why I assume it's in these orders. Yeah, Turkey needs to be able to crack out of this position in order to do anything, right? <laughs> and Italy's thing is how well can they defend before until someone turns around. Um, the, Turkey's thing was looking like how well can I defend before someone turned around, but they did get the person to turn around, so that's a uh, <laughs> that's a big plus in their book. Um, but it still looks very difficult for them to take much anytime soon. They're just going to be more of a thorn in the side than a uh, than an actual contention for the, for like winning. Although there's still eight years left, so there's eight years left, and as if, when, if, if you imagine that Smyrna is in Constantinople and a GNC has guesses of either convoying it to Greece or supporting it into Bulgaria, his vision looks a lot better. If you envision that Ankara makes it into the Black Sea while Smyrna makes it to Constantinople, Turkey is a huge favorite to get Bulgaria and then be able to build a fleet in Smyrna, look to take Ionian, bye-bye Greece. I mean... I see a very clear path forward for Turkey to grow and to not lose anything. I do not see that for Italy. Yeah, I do not see where Italy's growth comes from, like, ever. Unless they manage to cut a truce with Austria and then go, like, Venice to Piedmont and take French dots. But there you're, like, leaving yourself so open because you didn't build the extra army last year. Uh, Austria could just walk into Venice behind you. Which would just be horrendously painful. So yeah, I think then it's fair to say Turkey is above for Italy. I completely agree. Okay, well then here are our power rankings for winter nineteen o two. We've got Germany in first, England in second, Austria third, uh, France fourth, Russia fifth, Turkey sixth, and Italy after that stab moves down to seventh place. Shall we go ahead to the spring? Let's do it. All right. Spring 1903. Ooh, boy. I did not expect... Like, I was I was talking about how you don't want to move Ionia into Naples because it's a bad... Uh, it's a bad move. It takes your fleet out of the great spot that it's in. This is a way to stop that. <laughs> Yeah, it just required the Turk to agree to convoy, and of course Turk is going to agree to convoy you here. Yeah, because it gets that army out of the way, although Austria just immediately backfills it with Serbia, which probably wasn't what the Turk wanted to see. But, uh, but even still, you're happy as yeah. Turkey to see that. It's fewer units on the front. And it makes sure that Austria is committed against the Italian. Um, the Italian moves were exactly what you anticipated, except they did manage to bounce the Austrian out of Tyrolia. So actually... Yeah, they got German support. Yep. Which, it's a great thing to give for the German. I think that's a very good play. You do not want to uh, allow a big power on the other side of the board to get even bigger, while you're failing to get bigger, right? 
Uh, but yeah, so this means that Austria is not guaranteed Venice anymore, but they are, I think, guaranteed to keep Naples as long as uh, Turkey doesn't tap their fleet. Yeah, but why would Turkey do that? I mean, no, Turkey would probably much rather just try and take Bulgaria. <laughs> no. <laughs> or convoy into Greece. That's what the guess is going to be. Um, of course, it's not a guess okay. if Russia is like throwing a support hold on Bulgaria. But uh -huh. you got to hope that they don't do that. <laughs> uh, how does Russia win this game? Do they just stay allied with Austria here? I think it's too early to be talking about winning the game. We're in 03. I think there, it is just time to be talking about what's the best position Russia can get. I think the key for Russia is going to be getting St. Petersburg out, get it back to Moscow, get Bosnia into St. Pete. That is fair. I mean, yeah, they are not going to make any progress in the north. I think they want to keep these units up there to enable uh, England or Germany to stab each other. Because really, if you want to make any progress in the north here, you need to get that to happen, right? <laughs> um, and Army St. Petersburg enables Germany to stab uh, England with your support if they get if they rearrange things a bit. Um, and yeah, the... if they get their fleet into the Denmark, in the Denmark yep. or Skag, England <laughs> is not going to let. And fleet Bothnia allows a stab into uh, Sweden, or at least it helps that potentially happen. Um, so this is why you might want to keep those armies and fleets around, but really they're just hanging around in the hope that that will happen, and it doesn't look like it's going to right now. Yeah. There's some serious coordination here. If you look, this convoy over into Picardy is quite interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's very good tactically. <laughs> yeah, meant that they couldn't cut the support. Um, if you tried to put Belgium in, you have to support it with English Channel, and then, you know, the this exactly this moveset works well against that. You do breast, tap, English Channel, stop that from happening. But convoying over, you can't tap a convoy. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it just works. Um, but they do lose Burgundy at the same time, so... They're going to get Mid-Atlantic yep. Ocean. And... Yeah, they they are guaranteed to take Mid-Atlantic Ocean out there in Picardy, as you described. Yeah, I just realized it's not a build phase, so the French player cannot put that army back on the board yet. Um, yep. Which is the other downside. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's not... It, it, there is potential risk of Picardy to Paris, but... If I personally was playing as the French player, I would bet that they are not tapping Paris. And if I'm the German player, I tap Paris. <laughs> because you, uh, want but... to, you want to get your uh, builds. You don't want to help the English into the Arctic Ocean. That's, that's helping the English. Um... I just think that, so... Yeah, it's partially that. Partially, I'm just super confident that Burgundy is going to be tapping Picardy here. Because... You don't want to lose breast, and then the only and it's no way to guarantee not losing breast, right? Yeah. Picardy could support English Channel into breast, or supports a convoy into breast via English Channel, and then I receive taps mid Atlantic Ocean. Suddenly, breast is potentially lost. Yeah, I get you. So you gotta you gotta have Burgundy tap Picardy. You just want that risk. I, I mean, it's <laughs> it's very logical. It also just risks no progress being made, which if you tap breast, you're guaranteed to make progress, right? Yeah, but we can tap breast whenever we want. They're not going to kick us out of Picardy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I guess it's a fall so. turn. Take the dot. <laughs> I guess we'll see if they follow your advice. Is there anything else to talk about here, or should we just move ahead? Oh, I should say that, that convoy to Livonia it would not have worked, so it's a good thing the German didn't yeah, do it's it. It's like, everyone was staring at it, but why do you build it in Kiel and move it to Berlin, man? It's just... Yeah. I hate this build so much. <laughs> I, I really don't like Fleet Kiel as a build from Germany, but we more on this later. You I don't know. Army Kiel, yeah. Excuse me, Army Kiel. Army Kiel. Fleet Kiel I love. Army Kiel I don't. Yep. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, it tricked the Russian into uh, self-bouncing Livonia, although that was the only thing they could really do anyway, so... It's yeah, cool. like... yeah, it's fine. Okay, and uh, it also made the Russian move to Cilicia, which is gonna be a little interesting, I suppose. Um, they thought that Munich might go there. <coughs> Excuse me. No worries. So, uh, shall we go ahead to the fall, see how things work out? Yeah. Let it be known that I'm a genius, and I what I suggested would have worked, but <laughs> France was a loony and just dislodged Picardy, so Picardy retreated into Paris instead. France did not try to to dislodge Picardy. France went to Picardy, and the English threw an unwanted support on it, I think. <laughs> Which is incredible. Oh my god, I thought that was Brest. It's, no, the, uh, they were trying to support some move into Brest, right? And oh, actually, this is beautiful. This is incredible. Because you throw the support into Brest, you say, if you're cutting uh, Picardy, then you're dislodging Picardy. You don't get a choice. <laughs> so you 100% take Brest or Paris. I did not spot this. <laughs> Yeah, because you never see tactically like these in one v ones. Because in one v ones, you can't; these can't happen. Burgundy couldn't support, couldn't dislodge Picardy if they're their own units. And yeah. if it was, if Picardy was yours, you can't. But because they're two hostile powers, yeah, this is guaranteed to work. This needs to be a puzzle. You have to release a puzzle about this. Oh man! And then well, you just give everyone the answer. <laughs> yeah, but like, <laughs> post a puzzle on Reddit. People who don't watch our videos are going to see those puzzles. This is like the best puzzle. That's true. I, I absolutely love this. Like, fantastic unwanted play. Retreat, or the force, the unwanted dislodgement, the guaranteed retreat. But yeah. let me, we could have just tapped Paris and the whole thing would have worked because you just soul read them <laughs> and make it moves. Just... The difference is if you just tap Paris, then you are risking it not working if they go to Paris. Whereas yeah. this one, yeah. you are guaranteed to take one of the yeah. two. This is, of course, better. But <laughs> <laughs> if, when they do this move, you just you could soul read them and make the move. Uh, I'm sorely tempted to like m make a puzzle, puzzle video tonight, release it, and then wait to release this video until after. <laughs> yeah, that's a good call actually, because that puzzle is is gonna screw over everyone who hasn't seen this game. So we have to like ban Balky from posting it or something. <laughs> Balky and VIA. But a fantastic play from the German and English. This was just absolutely incredible. Um, and they yeah, get into the Atlantic Ocean and Burgundy at the same time. Which is just... this fleet in North Atlantic Ocean can take Liverpool, and England is not the one building. So North Atlantic Ocean is guaranteed to take Liverpool, and France needs to use two units to defend. The only two units to kick him out of Liverpool would be Mid-Atlantic Ocean English Channel. Yeah, England does need those two units to defend, and yeah, they would have to pull back entirely to do it. I don't think that's worth doing. I think you just... Keep on yep. pushing and let Liverpool go. Liverpool. Oh, I take it back. I take it back. You could do something like English Channel to Wales while you convoy Belgium to Eddie. That would work. Oh, because while the North Sea can't make it to Eddie, or the well, North Sea in Eddie can't interfere with Liverpool, the army can, which is why you need to specifically convoy the army over. But even still, it's a pretty big deal. I don't think you want to do it. Well... Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this in the north for a while now. There are some interesting moves going on in the south as well. Um, yeah. Shall we go ahead and, and look at those? Absolutely. I mean, Austria made up with the Italian. Yeah, Austria did what I said I would do if I was going to take over the the Austrian position, which was a beg Italy for forgiveness and go back against the Turk. And apparently... Italy bought it. Fucking hook, line, and sinker. I mean... And Austria did it. I'm... Wow. I'm impressed, and, like, this actually sets up a Lepanto. There's nothing Turkey can do to stop uh, an army being convoyed into Syria. Probably the Austrian army in Apulia. Although it would be kind of hilarious if he sells that and then just takes Venice anyway. <laughs> but, uh... That... It would have been far better to just support hold Naples if you're going to do this. Yes, if you were going to do that. Um, this is pretty clearly a signal of Austrian intent to kill Turkey. Yeah, and I mean, I'm on board. I'm like super on board. And Austria got Russia to support Holden in Bulgaria. Yep. Right? Do you think, do Village Idiot and Balky have some kind of feud? Do they not like each other? 
I feel like they can work together, but they certainly have a uh, rivalry. The two of them are like the two best players on play diplomacy, um, and have been swapping the title like over and over for a while. So there's definitely uh, some amount of competition between them. Uh, I could definitely see this being VI attempting really hard to keep them working together to just finish off Turkey in the south. Yeah. Like, the fact that he threw this support hold on Bulgaria is just... Russia so wants Turkey dead. Unbelievably much wants Turkey dead. And, yeah, I don't necessarily get it. I think in this position as Russia, I would be more interested in seeing Turkey make some progress again, looking through, like, the latest juggernaut ever, but... Yeah. He's, he's not interested. It's odd. Um... But hey, like suddenly Conk's position is really bad again in Turkey. Um, you can't stop this little Panto. You just can't. Uh, and there's not a lot you can do. It's, it's a. Like, things suddenly got so much better for Italy as well, especially if they convoy that Austrian army off of the homeland. There's just. Absolutely. I mean, they were supposed to be disbanding this year, and they're not disbanding. And these two hostile armies in their home and in the Ionian are just leaving. Of their own choice. You're like, oh, okay. Yep. Uh, right. uh, you can support whole Diana now, and the and and Turkey and Austria can't take it from you. They're just stuck in the Aegean and Eastern Med. You're totally safe from the fleets. The army of course can mess with you, but yeah. And of course, Russia's position, I would, I would argue, also did improve this phase because Gulf of Bothnia has been disbanded. He gets to rebuild it as an army, presumably in Moscow, but unclear exactly where and that's i think very good news for russia yep well yeah i mean you Point you really you want will. bothnia gone that's uh, <laughs> i think russia would have been wanting that gone for a while amusingly he didn't cover livonia this turn so germany could have gotten away with convoying <laughs> berlin over but then that nobody ever convoys berlin to livonia it's just Kiel, yeah, because that looks so much cooler. It's yeah. just... Yeah, anyways. <laughs> okay, anyway, shall we go ahead to the winter? Yeah. Okay, winter 1903. Army Moscow, Army Kiel. Yep, so no stab coming from the German on the English player anytime soon, I think. Um, or at least certainly not in this build phase. Ideally, when you stab uh, England in a Germany-England alliance this big, you really want it to be on a turn where you have... Two builds, and Kiel and Berlin are free, right? That's the dream. I would settle for an opportunity when I can take the North Sea. Um, if you can, if for whatever reason you find up your, you find yourself back in Denmark and you can make that move, then you're in good shape. But presumably, this England is being very firm, saying no, you do not get back into Denmark. I understand you're bigger than me. Germany is currently on seven centers, but England is at five. But Germany really can't make any aggressive moves. They only have one unit adjacent to Belgium, and the North Sea currently has potential to attack Denmark or Holland, meaning England has the stab potential, but Germany is just bigger. So I think both players are currently quite happy with their alliance. Yep, I'd agree. Uh, so... Let's yeah. see the Lepanto. Let's go ahead and see what happens in the spring. We assume there's going to be a convoy into Syria, and there it is from Apulia. Uh, Turkey not even bothering to turn around and try and take that. He's just trying to push his way out of Bulgaria, which, I mean, is fair. Moving back to Smyrna probably doesn't help anything here. Um, yeah. I, I think his position is actually better here. Um, he, he, it still sucks. Um, and that year, Smyrna is guaranteed lost. But if there wasn't an army in Bulgaria this turn, hypothetically, Italy or Turkey would still hold Smyrna because he could support Aegean into Smyrna. If he'd moved Constantinople into Smyrna, then when he supports Aegean, um, then he would have to have Aegean support hold Smyrna, which would be cut from Ionian. But yep. by having Aegean be the mover, it suddenly does not get cut. But Bulgaria taps Constantinople, and there's no trouble, so... Well, uh, the difference, of course, here is if, if you do the whole Ionian taps Aegean, Bulgaria taps Constantinople thing, you have to take Smyrna with the fleet in order to guarantee it, because Aegean could tap Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, I believe that's always true. 
Yeah, actually, that is true, Warden, no matter what. Um, but you don't really want to take some mana with the fleet. You would prefer to take it with the army, right? I what? suppose, actually, it's fine, because you can move the army up to Armenia, and then it's sort of in a decent spot. But yeah, yeah, but you'd definitely rather take it with the army. I mean, it's just better. But For sure. Actually, no, I tell a lie. You can take it with an army if you convoy over, right? No, because then you can't tap a gene. Okay. <laughs> so, um, interesting other things. Germany is facing significant resistance on this southern front now, with the Austrian pulling all their units up. Uh, Italy trying to make a jump onto France here, either to protect or attack them. I expect the hope is to get some juice before it's all gone. Yep, that's fair. Um... Ideally, he needs to get Western Mediterranean into Lyon to make sure that he has pressure on the one place, because he can't really take either with one unit on both. Uh... Seems difficult in this position, yeah. It's possible England is willing to support him into Spain in exchange for England taking Portugal, but unclear. Yep. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, there's... The French tri player tries to defend as best they can. They try and make sure that Germany can't get into Gascony. Um, but really not much they can do here apart from take Liverpool, right? <laughs> they got the correct guess on which of Portugal or Spain England would go to, at least. Yeah, I mean, like, again, because we can see these moves, technically this turn France could have had Picardy tap Paris and then self bounce in Gascony, and you would have held on to rest for an extra half year, but... Nothing really mattered. Everything is... He's kind of cooked. Yep. <laughs> Didn't we say we like, would rather be France than Russia or some shit? Well, <laughs> you said that even if you saw a two-center France in Iberia, uh, <laughs> compared to this current Russia, you would prefer the French position. Is I this... believe I said something along those lines, yeah. Is this still the case? <laughs> Looking I mean, at the... the Italian fleet in Western Red and the Army of Piedmont really puts a damper on my day. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, but you do have plus it's an army in Spain, not a fleet in Spain, so you can't even offer to support the Italian in the Mid Atlantic Ocean because that's usually your survival plan. With yep. your two fleets, you put the Italian in Mid Atlantic Ocean, you just support them there forever, and then something happens and you can break your way out. But uh, this is oh, looking tough, looking dicey. Interesting that the English player chose to go to Spain North Coast instead of South Coast here. Um... Yeah, probably to make peace with the Italian. Yeah. I guess they're just saying I'm not going any further than this. Um, which, I mean, is a way to try and stop the Italian from from uh, attacking you. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Certainly Germany seems to be in the better position of England and Germany right now, right? <laughs> With um, Especially now that the English army has been pushed out of Belgium. They can just walk in there. But then yeah. I suppose England can just walk into Denmark or Holland, so it kind of evens out. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, right? Germany is just bigger, but, like, Germany's not in Kiel either, and France is going to be the one taking Brest almost certainly this turn. England, so France yeah. is getting to build. Well, I don't know. No, England I, is losing Liverpool, so England is not uh, getting any builds. Yeah, I forgot about that <laughs> pesky little French fleet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Germany's position is more fun. Yeah. All right, well, I mean, shall we go ahead to the fall? Let's do it. Okay. I mean, Germany is also, we didn't really mention, but they are going east against the uh, Russian here, although now they just stop, um, which is a choice. <laughs> they... Oh, my God. Oh. And Austria got stabbed. <laughs> okay, so Russia just walks straight into Budapest here. There's uh, and the yeah, Austrian... honestly, I didn't even notice it was a guaranteed move. I forgot. I didn't notice that Serbia had moved down to Greece and therefore couldn't tap Budapest. Yeah. <laughs> so Austria doesn't have to disband, but they're not going to get to build either. And that Russian army in Budapest just has complete free reign right now. Especially if they can get the Italian to agree to attack with them. Because Budapest plus Venice? <laughs> that spells a pretty problematic situation for Austria. Um, I mean, we were wondering where Russia would get their growth. I guess this works. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. And uh, it's like picks up a center at the same time. I feel like that's just... This tanks Austria's chances a fair bit. On back, this game was played on Backstabber, correct? Yep. And on Backstabber, you can only issue support onto specific coasts, right? Yep. So this was actually very important for Italy here, because on normal rules, you could just support Mid-Atlantic Ocean to Spain, and you have to trust that England goes to the right coast. But on Backstabber specifically, you can say you are only going to the North Coast, because I'm only supporting you there. Yeah. A rather nice, That's nice true. rule. It's a, it's a very safe situation for Italy here. Um, they, England was only going to get in if they went to the North Coast, and if they're on the North Coast, they're not really a threat to Italy. Um, so, I mean, France is now down to two, Portugal and Liverpool. Yeah. Right? Uh, but they do have fleet mid-Atlantic Ocean, so... Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's... Yeah, you're right, they do. Yeah, it's certainly not, not good... But it's better than if they keep Portugal on the board, for example. <laughs> yeah, and from here... Yeah, I was thinking that there was some way that like Italy could support France back into Spain or something, and then use the French to support Hold Them in Marseille to hold the stalemate line forever, but that doesn't seem particularly viable. Mm, I think so. Fran uh, like Italy is more likely to just support themselves into Spain if they can do anything like that, right? But yeah, actually, I just thought you were vacating. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Germany is now in Gascony and Burgundy, so Italy can't be feeling that secure about that center in Marseille. Um, Not at all. Looks like Germany is just using them to get rid of a French unit. And then saying, oh, thanks. Yep. Always good. And Germany decides not to progress into into Russia. I think I mentioned this at the very start, but not really. We didn't really talk about it. They just held their position on this front, which makes sense with all the uh, Austrian units there, I suppose. Um, but Russia backing off, and now Russia going into Budapest at the same time. I wonder what Germany is going to choose to do here. As they do have to make a decision. Um, they're running out of France to grab. <laughs> Yeah, and with England getting this build, England's position is significantly stronger and more able to push than it would be when he's not. Previously, you'd expect to see England pull back a bunch of units to his homeland to deal with this French fleet, right? Two units needed to go back, but that's just not the case anymore, so... Yeah, they can build an army exciting. and then, then they just need to get one unit there. Um, yeah, should be interesting. I mean, I'm interested especially to see what happens in the south here, I think, most of all. I do want to see what Germany does, but, like, this Russian army in Budapest, I want to see whether they can get the Italian on side with that. Um, if the Italian runs into Austria, I, this is going to be so bad for Austria. And also, I'm very surprised that Turkey and Russia managed to coordinate leaving Black Sea open now. After all of that, constant bouncing. Um, but hey, I guess uh, when you're in this kind of Turkish position, you just gotta go for whatever deal is gets offered, right? And hope. Yeah, Turkey is very much in the uh, spray and pray phase of the game. Say anything to everyone and hope that someone agrees with you. Yeah, you do actually have to correctly predict which person is going to work with you, <laughs> though. <laughs> if they, if some of them tell you that they may, and then just go for the stab, because you're dead anyway. Um, and to be fair, they've been doing an excellent job of that so far, but they're still in a bad spot. <laughs> That's very obvious. Yeah, I think Austria. I think negotiations fell through or something when. Presumably, Turkey was asking for Greece or Bulgaria, and then Austria said sure, but decided they didn't want to work with Turkey, and then, boom, bounced them out of Greece, and then did, went for the stab. I think that turn is where yeah. the Turkish negotiations fell through. Yep, but now they have the Russian on their side, potentially, unless Russia yeah. builds a fleet here and then goes off to them. Right, if Russia builds Fleet 7, it's just like, look, man... I don't know. I would be that. That would be hilarious to me. I'd love it. 
<laughs> this could well be arranged. It almost certainly isn't. I don't think you want to see that Russian army in Budapest uh, as the Austrian. Austria. <laughs> yeah, but... I don't think you can accept this. Not when your homeland is so vacant. Yep. But it's 04. We have to do power rankings again, yeah? Yeah, well, let's go into the winter first here. Uh, Ankara coming off the board, that kind of makes sense, I suppose. It wasn't... Like, Aegean yeah. is a nice spot to be. Uh, but still, bad position for the Turk. Army Sevastopol, not the fleet, so they are going to continue this attack against the Austrian, one would assume. Um, and France chooses to take off Liverpool, which is an interesting decision. You'd have thought they could... That's, like, their most likely centre to hold out in. Kind of, but not really. I, I get why they disbanded it, because at least with Mid-Atlantic Ocean and Portugal, they can attempt to negotiate with Italy and say, look, you want to get me into Spain because I'm going to support Hold You in Marseille and we're going to we're gonna stay together here. Um, but if it's England in Spain, then suddenly you're in bad shape. He's going to work with Germany to kick you out of Marseille. You're not going to hold. Let me into Spain, and I'm going to stay there for the rest of the game. Or something. I think I think that's his pitch. And we'll see if it works. The problem with Liverpool, he's more likely to keep it for this year, right? He's going to lose it now. But you're not going to stay in Liverpool. If France ever gets another build, which... England, I yeah. mean, Portugal <laughs> looks like a build. Then Liverpool is guaranteed dead. And... and even if he doesn't, he's got a fleet in the North Sea that can probably make it around. He's got a fleet in Norway that could probably make it around. Or a fleet in Brest that could probably make it back. He needs only one more unit to ever get there, and suddenly you're, you're cooked. So, yeah, I think it's tough, but I think, I think this is the decision that gives him the best chance to make it to the end of the game, but is definitely the decision that does not maximize his expected life. Right? Yeah. I think that makes sense. Like, if you were just trying to survive as long as possible, you keep Liverpool. If you're trying to take the risk and say, okay, this is the slightly better situation, if it actually works out, then you keep these two. I agree. I, I can see this. Not ideal, but yeah. I mean, hey. And uh, Fleet Naples probably means that Italy is still working with Austria, right? Yes. Uh, Army Naples would have been very strong given the Russian move into Budapest here, uh, but also kind of declares your intention, so... Or Army Rome, for that matter, because you, you want to move Yeah, Paris Army Rome is even more uh, of a declaration, but Army Naples, I would... If I'm Austria, I would still be pretty terrified. Yep. Um, so, yeah, so, power rankings. I mean, I think Germany and England are still one and two. I would agree. I think Germany's still in first, right? It's interesting because yeah. with the Liverpool disband now, England has a pretty solid position behind the German lines. I don't think Germany ha will have that many more chances to uh, to stab past. Them. Yeah, and I actually would flip them. You think based on because of the North Sea, mm. like the negotiations between England and Germany, it is so hard for Germany to ever get back into Belgium. Or, excuse me, that back into Denmark now that he has left. And England being in the North Sea means that he can attack Holland, he can attack Denmark. He he has had no reason to be in the North Sea for a few turns now, and yet he's still been just support holding Norway for no reason. Or, not no reason, but for no real reason, just keeping his fleet there. He has potential to make the move. And he's not behind on center count because Liverpool is essentially his. It gives him a great excuse to have this army on the mainland that's going to be there to convoy into Germany soon after. And frankly, I don't see how Germany could ever get position again. If we look at England's position, his fleet, Spain, north coast, that's not pushing to the south. He doesn't have an army in Norway, so that's not going into St. Petersburg to make progress. Who does England attack here except for Germany? You're right, it kind of just has to be Germany. You need to get to St. Petersburg if you're going to do anything here with Germany still, and, like, that just feels less good than, <laughs> than taking all the senses. Um, and once you look at that, now this means Germany needs to attack England right now. We hope to God that Austria and Russia are at war, and so Bohemia and Tyrolia pull back into Vienna and Trieste, maybe Galicia or something. That is... Desperately, 
desperately hope is Germany, because if that's not true, Germany's just cooked right off the bat, because he can't use so many of these armies. But even still, you need to get... Right, you can take Belgium from England, probably, once your armies get around there. Okay, but what else can you do? You have a really hard time getting anything, because England has so many more fleets than you. So... Yeah. I think England is favored in the war against Germany, and I think England basically has to attack Germany. So, I don't think England. I don't think Germany can be higher than England. I think I agree. Actually, looking at it, like my first instinct is that Germany is in a stronger position because my first instinct was okay. As you know, as an EG here, if you're going for a solo as England, you probably just stick with Germany and keep trying to push around, right? Um, until you've got a center over the line. But they don't need to solo. They don't need to get to 18. They just need to be at the top in 1910. And, like, stabbing Germany is a very good way to do that. <laughs> in fact, it's kind of the only way to do that. Right. Um, so you'd have to stab Germany at some point, yes. Yeah. And Germany it's just... Possible, it's possible you can convince Germany to wait a year, and then you take Liverpool and Portugal, and then it's even better. But yep. I think you just make the move right now when it's still good. Yeah. Uh, so after that, who is next? I wonder if it's Russia. This is like the Austrian situation is absolutely reliant on the Italian not attacking them, right? This is they just seem very out of position right now. Yeah, I suppose they can get back into position where they can counter the Russian quite quickly. They go to Vienna, they go to Trieste, they go to Serbia. But that Turkish fleet is still in the Aegean Sea. They've still got an army in Syria, which is, like, that can go up to Armenia, I guess. Uh, but it's not immediately useful. Um, they've got a fleet stuck in Smyrna. Uh, and they kind of have to rely on this Italian unit in, in Ionian, the Italian unit in Venice, not collaborating against them yeah on the flip side they see austria seems more likely to get something from russia than russia does to get something from austria mm. um, army moscow army warsaw are not in the best positions to gain against austria and as soon as austria gets into vienna trieste serbia as you described budapest is going to be difficult to defend Honestly, I'm not so convinced that Austria and Russia are at war right now. You sure? I'm I'm not convinced at all. I would need to talk to anyone to see because this right now, if they coordinate, they potentially can get Munich and they can finally finish off Turkey. Russia can actually get into the Black Sea now. If they do fight then Austria's going to have a tough time of it, and I'm not sure exactly what Russia gets from it. It's it's an odd war that neither side really has an advantage, and they both are pretty thin. Definitely Austria's spread much more thin than Russia, but Russia's position just doesn't scream like it gets much. I feel like I don't know. both positions really want the Italian assistance. That's the main thing, right? So maybe the Italian is in the best spot about anyone here, um, despite sense accounts. Uh, but I don't really see how the Italian makes gains either. They kind of have to say to the Austrian, hey, you know, I'll work with you as long as you give me Greece here and... Uh, Smyrna later. Yeah. In fact, actually, that's probably what's going to happen, right? So... Yeah, but do you think they're going to work with Austria? Do you think they're just going to uh, like attack Austria and then take yeah, them? I, hmm. Okay, right? so That's question. Austria, aren't you terrified of this? I don't know, man. Do you put Italy above either Austria or Russia? Because right now they're smaller, right? If our read of the game is entirely accurate and England attacks Germany here, then yes, I believe that is the case. If not, and Italy's about to lose Marseille and is going to come under pressure from the West, there's no way. Right. So which one do you think is more likely? <laughs> I'm not, I think it's more likely that England stabs Germany, but since this is a percentage-based thing, I'm going to say it's going to be like 60%. Well, 
let's say. And so what you have to do is you have to take 60% of the position that Italy would get, assuming there was the stab, and you have to, right, you multiply the position by that, and then you take the 40% times the position Italy would have, assume there is no stab. And then you combine these two to get the expected value of the Italian position from the next few years. And I believe that expected value is lower than the expected value for Austria and Russia. Okay, so you would put Italy below those two, mainly because yes. there is a chance that they just get completely demolished in the West. Oh. That they just have to put all their units down and then just say, well, we're in North Africa, I'll go for Leon and Tunis and Piedmont, and we're just sitting here forever. And, like, that's a totally reasonable position for the Italian to get into, and I, that just... Yeah, you're not doing anything in that position. Okay. So, I mean, really, then the only questions are, are we putting Russia above Austria or Austria above Russia? Um, I'm... <laughs> Russia above Austria. Yeah, I think that would be my inclination to... The only thing giving me doubt is if... It's a, if, it, if England and Germany work together, c continue to work together, then Russia is fairly screwed, right? <laughs> I mean, they're going to lose St. Petersburg, I agree, but there's there's no army that is... Well, I mean, then they'll also, they'll also have pressure on Warsaw and Moscow, which is exactly what they need not to happen in order to win this war against Austria. Um, but if Austria sees that England and Germany are continuing to work together, Austria can't kill Russia. Because Austria's never going to board top that game. Uh, that's fair. So, it's, it's tough. Like... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would say Russia's position is much better than Austria's, but okay. obviously that could be Well, uh, oh, and um, I've already kind of thought this, but the uh, Turkish position is slightly better than the French position, I would say. Right? Significantly better yeah. than the French position. Because yeah. the, the Turkish has a bunch of neighbors who are fighting, and they, they still have their homeland, and you know they still have a chance to get back into it. Uh, France is going for a hold on the stalemate line away from my home senses a little bit at best. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So here are our power rankings for winter 1904. England in first, uh, Germany second, Russia third, Austria fourth, Italy fifth, and then down the two center powers at the bottom, Turkey in sixth and France in seventh. Let's move ahead to the spring of 1905. Hey, I'm so good at this game, dude. Look at me go. <laughs> Which bit? Oh, the, uh, yes, you were correct. This is, so the Austrian and the uh, Russian were not fighting. Or are not fighting, at least. Yeah, they took Budapest and said, that's all, or, that's all I'm taking. Let's, yeah. let's be friends. Well, <laughs> poor Turk. I missed, of course, everything else about the face, but that was the important part that I, <laughs> that I got. Yep. Because, of course, I missed that England is not, in fact, stabbing Germany right now. I missed uh, that England is, in fact, going after St. Petersburg. I just I missed everything else, but, again, I got the important part. Okay, England's position, like, they convoyed their units away from Belgium. They can't stab the German that easily anymore. Um, no, but they get to take St. Pete with an army. Yeah, they also gave away Spain. Um, presumably with the... Because it was with Italian support, so I assume the Italian is going to now support them into Portugal. Um, but they have to cover London, because the, the French are in the English Channel. If France just doesn't uh, Yeah, but that's... That, North Sea can cover London, right? Yeah, if France just doesn't prevent that, then suddenly they're out of North Sea again, which is... They've got nothing I mean... to backfill. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I'm not... Germany's not in Denmark, right? And then London can yeah. move back to the North Sea, but then you're, you have a hard time convincing them. Yeah, I that's mean... True. This is, I, yeah. just, I think their position to stab Germany has gotten substantially worse in, in a lot of I, respects. I agree. Yeah. I agree. This move, this move definitely was the I'm not going to stab Germany move. Mm, which feels like it may not have been the correct one. Although we'll it's see. definitely not the most cutthroat. But if they just get to the board top anyways, it's fine. I mean, yeah. like one term in EGs, England always has the ability to stab Germany, right? Just they have to do so much work to not have the ability to stab Germany, and you just have to, like, not do that, right? 
even if you're in the English Channel, you can still convoy to Belgium, and that's going to do a ton of work. And like, if you make one of these stabby moves at the same time, I don't know. I I still am pretty happy with England's position. England could well get two builds here from uh, Saint Petersburg and um, Liverpool. Although, if they have to cover London, that's uh, potentially one of them not being able to be built. But yeah, it's it's actually good for England, hilariously, because you want your units to be... If you are stabbing Germany, then the units that you build on the British mainland are actually the best units, because they're the ones that get thrown into Germany, whereas the units that are built and get pushed to the front lines cannot stab Germany. So you want to be slower. The, The less you reposition, the better you are to stab. The better equipped you are to stab Germany. Yeah. Although, if you'd have left Belgium in Belgium, <laughs> you would have been better equipped. Uh, that is certainly true. <laughs> but, like, sometimes your ally just makes a good argument, and you can't really explain why you're going to keep Belgium in Belgium. Right? <laughs> sometimes you just have to say, okay, okay, fine, you're right, you got me. I, there's, I cannot explain why I need this position, so you're right. Yep. Um, Yep. And I mean, I think that's what happened here. Is Germany made a good argument? We needed to get an army into Norway, and we need an army to take Saint Pete. You can't use Eddie because Eddie needs to take Liverpool. Fine. What other army can we put into Norway? There is literally not another army on the board. So. Yep. Okay. So fine. You got. Yeah. Shall we discuss what happened in the south? <laughs> I think. Well, I'd love to. So it feels like the uh, the the Italian. Um, made this deal that I suggested where they ask for Greece and then work with the Austrian and of course as you predicted it turned out the Austrian and the Russian weren't actually fighting or at least if they were they made up very very quickly Um, so the Austrian just takes advantage of this wait hang on no because the Austrian stabs the Austrian, sorry, the Austrian gets his support on Bulgaria cut here. You would think if he was offering Greece to the Italian, he would know that that wouldn't work. Uh, but in any case, the Italian does try to take Greece and does try to go around to Tyrolia and... My guess is that Turkey offered Italy support into Greece with the GNC. Oh. And said, hey... I hate Austria. You hate Austria. Will you attack Greece? And then I'll support you into Bulgaria. And then Italy said, sure. Expecting the move to go through. And then Turkey actually just went for Bulgaria himself because Greece was getting tapped. Problem is, I think Turkey is literally dead this turn. Yep. They cannot protect Ankara. Uh, They have lost Constantinople. They can try and support back into Constantinople, but they've got the Black Sea to worry about now. Um, yeah. They can try and take and a stab at really, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's gonna, like, yeah. there's a guess for Turkey to stay alive at one center and then be dead. So. Yep. Uh, so, <laughs> not good for our, our old Frank Conk there. <laughs> um, although, like, Russia's not in a great spot now, either with the German and the English player sticking together. Um, they are poised to lose St. Petersburg they are also poised to have some significant problems in Warsaw uh, which they can protect by support holding it with Galicia but not for long yeah I'm not you say not for long I'm not convinced of that fact Um, St. Petersburg is going to I assume going to make it into Livonia Um, this is probably true my expectation is going to be that Moscow supports St. Pete to Livonia and also Warsaw, and then Galicia supports Old Warsaw. So if the if England and Germany don't guarantee St. Pete, you end up in Livonia, which is a solid place to be defensively. It's going to take them a long time to break you. You're already in Galicia. And if you get a dot from Turkey in the south, and I th- think it's very likely Russia is the one who gets something, either Ankara or Bulgaria, then he doesn't have to disband and then he can get Romania back into Ukraine where suddenly you don't take Warsaw or Moscow for a billion years that's Um, fair I was considering the German pushing because like the English is going to get an army into St. Petersburg right so Moscow is going to be cut you 
are probably going to be looking at the German trying to get Livonia. Um, if they can get into Livonia, then I think Warsaw just falls, right? If there is nothing in Ukraine, or... Yeah, if there's nothing in Ukraine, that's true. But I'm pretty sure that Russia has enough units to get in, to be in Galicia and Ukraine, Warsaw, Moscow, and Sevastopol. And I'm pretty uh, sure that's that's just a line. If they get the unit from Ankara, then yes, I think they do, right? They have enough armies, they just have to pull St. Petersburg back to Moscow and Moscow down to Ukraine. And then they're good. Although, that would be a very annoying situation for the Russian, because they have to commit... Obviously not ideal. <laughs> I completely agree with you. I like Russia is not happy about this, but I don't think that Russia is necessarily in danger of losing all of their centers. It's just Russia is in danger of getting stopped at six and then stuck forever, where Austria has free reign. He needs to use two units in Tyrolia and Bohemia or something to hold this part of the line against all of the German and, and British units. And in the meantime, he's free to, let's say, take the rest of the Turkish dots and then attack Italy or something. And then we're top. So, yeah, obviously I don't think Russia's happy with this position. I think Austria's position looks much better now, but uh, I don't think Russia's going to die. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, shall we... Nice end games get me. I, I'm still unused to these hard-ended because I'm used to basically saying, if I'm not dead, I'm in the game. But with a nineteen ten end, that's just not true. Yeah, you can you can just not have a chance to win three years from the end because you're not in position. That's rough. This is true. Um, I mean, I'd say there's usually some slither of chance, especially in so in Nexus, uh, the whole first, second, third, fourth, etc. in the tournament they're entirely based on this board and what positions people are in from supply center count. So while the first position is really the only one that matters in terms of being declared the Nexus champion, people who can't get first place will still often play for, uh, play to try and take second or take third or so on, um, by SC count. So it's not just a case of, you know, those players who can't win vote for a winner at the end, which is quite often the case with top boards. Um, it is if, a case people, of if people are not playing only for first place, then sure, there's going to still be play in Russia's position um, because it's likely England and Germany will do some nonsense and alleviate some pressure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, Want to see the fall? Yeah, let's go ahead to the fall of 1905. Halfway through this game, Turkey is... Um, alive in Greece, in Greece. <laughs> right? Okay. Okay. With Turkish, with sorry, Italian support, um, they do try and put the Russian into Serbia. Russia does not accept that, but Russia walks into Vienna instead. Russia gets two builds, but they can only use no. They only get one build because they lost Saint Petersburg, but they do get to use that build in Sevastopol. Um, and Austria is down to chest. Trieste. As their homes, yeah. Uh, which is interesting. I wonder if this was greed again, because they could have very easily protected against this with Bohemia to Vienna, right? Um, and it looks like the Russian and the Austrian are moving in sync uh, down in the south. So perhaps they just said, yeah, you, we, you need that extra unit more than I do, right? Yeah, it's probably Russia saying, look, I'm going to get tied down everywhere in all of my spots, and I am not willing to accept that position because I can never win from that spot. So, yeah. I need to hold against England. You need me to hold against England, but I need to take Vienna because I need more flexibility. If that's the pitch he made and it worked, then more power to him. Yeah, I think it's very easy to look at this side of the board as the main attraction here because of the Turkish demise, but do you see what's happening on the other side? <laughs> Tur Germany just stabbed. Uh, Belgium and Norway both go to the German, plus they knock the English player out of Brest with uh, with help from that French fleet, and the English player moves out of the North Sea to protect London. Um, yeah, it is such a subtle stab, too. It is two units moving, Sweden and Burgundy, and Paris support holding, or supporting a movement. Yep. None of the rest of their units turned around. Even one of their units even put 
that English army into St. Petersburg, which was where they wanted it to go, so that yeah. they could get into position next to the North Sea. But... And then did Spain order, like, Mid-Atlantic Ocean... Did, what did Spain order here, exactly? Uh, Spain ordered... Let me just look down this list that you cannot see. <laughs> um, um, support Mid-Atlantic Ocean to Spain South Coast. It looks like a misorder. Um... Yeah, definitely a misorder. Yeah, uh -huh. been a deliberate misorder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oops, I'm sorry, I misclicked. I didn't realize I wasn't supporting you into into Portugal. My bad. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it could well be in conjunction with the uh, with the German stab here. Although, do you really want the German stab? Like, if you know about the German stab as Italy, surely you want to get the English player into Portugal. You want to make sure they're they're somewhat strong. Um, yeah, I would support them into Portugal and then say, look, man, I'm not going to take Portugal. You don't need this fleet. You can disband it. Yep. That's, that's so the pitch I can make. Maybe it's more likely that Italy made a deliberate misorder because the uh, because they thought this Germany-England alliance would stick together and they didn't actually want the English players to make progress. Yes. I, I agree. Yeah. But... <sighs> Man, this is this suddenly really turns the tables on the English player. <laughs> like, wow, because this is the perfect stab, right? That we were talking about. You get two centers, you stick fleets in Kiel and Berlin, and, then, and North Sea is vacant. And North Sea is vacant, <laughs> and you have a fleet adjacent to North Sea. It's not the one in Denmark that you usually expect it to be, but, but it's uh, the one in Norway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, excellent play by the German here, and. Putting the French player back into Brest, France is really not a threat at this point. They'll probably just happily help whoever is helping them, right? So They're looking to get whatever dodge they can. Yeah. So you've just made a friend of the French player, um, and they'll probably help you out if they can. With, if with they the... think they can get Spain, they'll probably make that move. Yep. So... <laughs> so England gained... St. Petersburg, and Liverpool, yep. but lost Brest, Belgium, and Norway. So they do go minus Belgium. one. Spain, Brest, Belgium, Norway. Oh. Minus two. Oof. What do you even take off from two? I feel like Picardy has to be one of them, right? Picardy doesn't feel like a good spot for the fleet to be. Uh, yeah, like Picardy and St. Peter or something. Yeah. I was thinking Picardy and Barents, but you're probably right. The army is... Maybe even St. Pete and Liverpool? No, sorry, Piccadilly and Liverpool? Because you're not... It's not your homeland under threat right now. And, like, St. Petersburg and Barents are relatively effective together. Uh, I could see Liverpool getting taken off. I just know that my my homeland is about to be under attack. Yeah. Uh, I just know that's happening, and I want to keep that army, because I just I want... I don't want to get rid of... Yeah, I don't know. Having an army in your homeland is a very good way to defend this as England. Um, yeah, and I do want to keep Picardy because it can retake English Channel, right? I can have London support Picardy to English Channel. And I... if I do that, you want to bounce North Sea. Yeah, actually, that's true. I was thinking, if you're sending London to North Sea, then there's a very real chance Picardy just gets blown up anyway, right? Ah, uh, Mal can support Picardy to North Sea, to English Channel, though, because we're still in Mal and not Portugal. Yes. Okay, I take it back. Okay. We don't. We, we should keep Picardy then. So yeah, probably like we blow up Liverpool, St. Pete, and we just say, "Yep, yeah, I'm British. I have fleets. Come at me, bro." <laughs> but uh... get into Norwegian, bounce to North Sea, get into English Channel, bounce to North Sea, and you just say, "Yeah, what you gonna do, Germany? What you gonna take from me?" Yep. And then you lose St. Pete, and you have to disband something, and you're down to uh, exactly three fleets, and you don't really have any options. Yep. This is a bad situation for the English player. Um, Very good stab here from Germany. Yes, I don't really see where their support is even going to come from. You probably want to get the Russian to not take St. Petersburg back off you, right? That's kind of all you can do. Uh, and I guess maybe get Italy to move to Gascony, but they can't even do that because the French player is still in Portugal and the French player will now be on the German side. Uh, so, yeah... This is a difficult situation. Shall we go ahead to the winter? 
Yes. All right. Winter 1905. Austria has to disband one because they lose Vienna. Um, they taking they they're taking off Albania, which makes sense. Their position seems a little bit spread thin now. Um, and you were absolutely right about the German, uh, not the German, the English disbands. Although I was not right about the German builds, I thought it was going to be double fleet. Germany's just like I don't even need these fleets to to take you down. I'm just going to use three. <laughs> Dude's got... Dude's cocky, man. <laughs> yep. Well. Since you want a fleet in Hugland, Bight, Denmark, Skagrak, and Norway, those are the spots you need to get the North Sea. But... I mean, right now, he's only got one fleet adjacent to the North Sea, so maybe you think you can race him to him, but, like, Barron's going back to Norwegian, plus Picardy getting up into English Channel. You are going to need... Uh... Maybe he's counting on the English... No, no, because the English is supporting with the Mid-Atlantic Ocean back from Picardy into the English. So, yeah, it might be difficult for him to take the North Sea here. But it would have taken a while regardless because Berlin doesn't get to the front line for a little bit. It takes a year to get to Denmark, yeah. which is the same time off he gets to Skagerrak. So. It's true. Well... Uh, is there anything else notable about these builds? We do see an Italian army. Yep, I think Army Realm was the notable one. It indicates to me um, they do not plan on holding the Mediterranean for forever and instead want to make progress against Germany and or hold against the Russia-Austrian alliance. Yep. I mean, there is a very, very real threat that Germany will just run over the rest of this game now if no if the rest of the board doesn't unite against them, right? Because Yeah, I mean I'm pretty sure the rest of the board is gonna unite against them, so Yep. But we can see right I completely agree. If they don't, right, if if Austria and Russia decide to get to war right now and Italy just like snips at the at the sides of it, right, tries to like take Trieste and take Greece or whatever, then yeah, Germany is a huge favorite to just crush. But yeah, I don't think that's likely. All right. Well, shall we move into the spring? Let's do it. All right. Spring 1906, uh, even. <laughs> um, your Holy shit. What the... What? Okay. This is more movement just... arrows than I'm used to. <laughs> I'm just so confused. What is... What exactly is England's plan here? Moving to Yorkshire. Yeah, got into Norway, but they lost the North Sea to do it. And Germany moved most of his units not against England, right? Bothnia helped his armies make progress against Russia and didn't move into Sweden. They have to be at war. That's, like, guaranteed the two of them are at war. But... I mean, yes, because he built that army in Berlin. He didn't build a fleet in Berlin, so he doesn't have that. Dude, that's so weird. It's such an odd choice, yeah. I think, like, London to Yorkshire is possibly... So, clearly they wanted to get into Norway. They were like, okay, I'm willing to give up North Sea if I get Norway. That's a really odd choice. It's like... I guess they thought, I need supply centers to stay in this game, I'm losing St. Petersburg no matter what. I think I'll take the risk on uh, bouncing Norway and North Sea out of one of Edinburgh or London in order to make sure I stay on four. But Yeah, and I mean, there's a world where they take Brest yeah. if Italy is willing to support them using Gascony, and that would mean England would build one. Yep. Yeah. So maybe it is worth it in that respect. Um, they did, like, Germany and France did try and go for this arrangement in the, around English Channel where they blow up Picardy. It did not work. Um, and the fact that they did that means they can't convoy into the British mainland anymore. So the most devastating attack against the English player is no longer an option. Um, plus, Bothnia did not go to Sweden. Like, as you were saying, all the moves from Germany, apart from these few up here, like Kiel and Norway, were actually not against the English player. They were going to the other side of the board. 
So, interesting choices here. The um, the South, it does not seem they have gotten their act together at all. Nope. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Austria supports Turkey into Bulgaria so that he can attack Constantinople. Um, Presumably with the plan of then taking Smyrna. Yep. And takes Vienna back. I guess he feels like he needs to get his home centers back and he needs to build in order to get back into this game. But if he attacks the Russian hard right now, Germany is probably just going to win. That's... Is, there's no counterbalance anywhere. You have to really hope that England gets that build off of Brest and like can put up some kind of a defense. But that just seems so unlikely to work. Yeah, it's tough. I. Yeah, it's very tough. And I think Austria's position was really awkward once, once Russia took Vienna, because you couldn't rely on simply letting time pass for your position to improve. You had to make a play. Absolutely, because you you didn't have the like. Even if you pulled off a great move where you took a bunch of centered, you'd still only be able to build one. That's never a good situation, especially yeah. if people are sitting in those other home centers. Um, so, yeah, but at the end of the day, it's Italy who ends up getting the, the center here, most likely. They get into Greece behind the Turk, right? Um, Austria probably gets a build off of Vienna, but Germany is across the line in Tyrolia. They've surrounded Warsaw... They're like I suppose they don't really have St. Petersburg surrounded at the moment because of that English fleet in uh, Norway, but it just feels so bad to have the east side of the board fighting right now with this yes. giant threat. Absolutely, Germany is not quite double digits, but it feels very much like the hey, we should probably stop the board leader from doing better. But yep. I, I also don't really understand why Austria thought it was a good idea to support Turkey into Bulgaria. I suppose it gets it out of the way, right? You can quite easily blow up that fleet now if you want to. But, I mean, couldn't you have just let it go with one support? No, without a support even, so that it bounced Romania if Romania goes there? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, did is there anything you want to focus on here, or shall we just go ahead to the fall? I mean, the big takeaway is Germany's trying to fight the rest of the board right now, and the rest of the board is not fighting back, so it might work. Yeah, I agree. Uh, shall we go ahead to the autumn? No, uh, let's do it. All right, fall 1906. Germany gets pressed. Oof. Okay. okay. Um, I mean, it's not good for Warsaw, though. They, yeah, okay, so... Uh, English Channel was able to cover London, and uh, Yorkshire was able to cover Edinburgh, so this made more sense than I initially thought it did. I, for some reason, forgot that English Channel could cover London. Um, actually... The Italian puts the English player into Spain North Coast. So the English player does get a build, but because of the way that Germany played this, because they decided not to go for supply centers and just take position, that build is in a pretty useless spot in Liverpool. Um, it, can, it can be army Liverpool to try and defend, but even then, it's not great. <laughs> Um, and the French got into the English Channel, they know that their unit in Portugal is going to get blown up in a second, so they've got to take that off. They can help the German out maybe by convoying over. This is the nice thing about having like a vassal state. Um, they will. The German player gave the French player a second chance of life, that means the French player is probably just going to say, you know, I'll do whatever you want me to at this point. Seems likely. Italy still gets a build, despite giving away Spain. They do, yeah, because they pick up Trieste and they pick up uh, Greece. They take Russian support. I wonder if that was agreed or not. 
I feel like it can't have been agreed, right? From Austria's position? No way. Austria's yeah. not building now. Even though Austria's taking Vienna, Budapest, um, and losing nothing, they're they're going to be playing two under. Yeah. Well, they lost Smyrna, right? Um, uh, they did lose Smyrna. But they, because, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is an odd choice from the Austrian again. Why would you put Turkey back in their home center? This is just... Like, what? Yeah. I think here you should have not done this. Like, here's a time where Ankara support Hold Khan, and then you beg Italy to support Serbia to Bulgaria, or something. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Something like that, but... If you're gonna put Turkey back in their home supply centers, I feel like you should have just taken... Maybe the position in black is better. Um than if you had taken Smyrna. I suppose the benefit of putting this unit here is that you can still knock the Russian out without uh, losing Black Sea, you know, while still going to Black Sea and threatening the uh, the Russian centers in the Northern Balkans and in Sebastopol. But the giving centers back to Turkey when you've yeah. nearly got them killed, that just feels wrong. I mean, they are down to just one Fleet. center, right? Yep. This is so true. I... And if they're a vassal in the same way that France is to Germany, then that's a good thing. Yep. Yeah. So that's fair. I guess maybe the Austrian is intending to like ask the Turk now, can you support Ankara to, to Smyrna? And then, you know, the Turkish fleet can go out and help against Italy or something. Um, so... Yeah, I, I imagine at this point Turkey's main thought is going to be I want to outlive France so that I can get that 6th place instead of 7th, right? Uh, yeah, I mean this is not, it's not trivial at all. Yep. Interestingly, I mean the, the German position... Despite them getting a build here from Brest, I feel like the fact that they have this Italian army in Burgundy, it just got a whole lot more difficult. Yes. This is even with the Eastern Chaos. Huh. Yeah, Italy getting this army into Burgundy is really important. Yeah. Oh, Germany didn't get a build. Germany lost Norway. So, they're still on 9. Um, yeah. Huh. Yeah, I mean, dots are important, man. Like, North Sea is the North Sea, but a dot's a dot. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Though they didn't really have the opportunity to take any dots, they what they really needed to do was move Bothnia to Sweden last turn, so that they would have had the opportunity to get Norway at least. Um, but well, I guess they didn't they anticipate... Help. Yeah, it was that they needed to not leave Norway. They probably didn't anticipate actually getting into North Sea. Was just right? What it was. That's, that's obviously it, but like that seems like the main mistake. Hmm. It's, it's very, very rare that we say taking North Sea was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, it just... Maybe it was here. I don't know. That's crazy. Hmm. Well... I mean, suddenly, despite the fact the rest of the board is fighting, Germany's position doesn't look so great. Um, I mean, it still looks good. It, it still looks it the is... best on the board, I think. But <laughs> it's like the building, and yeah, it's not the best build in the world. But maybe England can find a way to convince France to stay on side. Maybe Italy deci decides to tell France, "Hey, I'll support you back in the breast, and I'm not going to take Portugal, but like we want you to to do this," and then. France just says, oh, that's great, absolutely. Maybe this vassal state won't work for Germany. It's very, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, shall we go into the winter here? Absolutely. An interesting situation, to be sure. Um, we're going to see Army Liverpool, we're going to see Portugal coming off, which makes sense. I didn't even yeah. realize the Russian had got a disband here, but I guess it makes sense with how much they lost on the Austrian front. Yeah. Vienna and Budapest are not fun. And then Italy builds Fleet Naples. Which is a choice. It means they're probably not continuing this attack against the Austrian player. Um, 
like, what's it intending to do? I love how multicolored uh, Turkey is at the moment, by the way. It's beautiful. This is, <laughs> yeah, this is power rankings year. I think it's fairly clear that Germany is in first, yes? Yeah, very clearly. So the question is, who is in second? I wonder if it's Italy. Italy. Yeah. That would be my guess. Um... Just because they they really stand the, to gain the most from the situation as it stands, they're the main one opposing Germany, and like, they also don't really have any enemies. They they did just walk into an Austrian center, but if the Austrian turns around to push them out, they're giving land back to the Russian. So difficult, difficult for Austria to attack. I wonder if this is why. So. Austria obviously was going to have some problem building, no matter what, right? I wonder if this is why Austria put the Turk back into the Turkish Homer Sea, because he thinks that he is not going to get a chance to build a fleet anytime soon. In which case, this could be really smart, um, assuming the Turk stays on side. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a big assumption. <laughs> it is indeed. Um, so, after Italy... Who would we put in third place? I don't know. Yeah. Austria is in the Black Sea, and when Austria is in the Black Sea, that like that means good things, and he, they have recovered Vienna and Budapest. That's true. They just do have a big angry. It, well, not not angry per se, just a big Italian behind them and a Russian on the other side of them, and. If this war continues, then Germany's going to gain more out of it. Uh, I don't know how they make too much progress without also causing German progress. Well, they attack Italy. Yep. I mean, if they can pull off a peace treaty with the Russian, they're in a good spot. Yeah, and I think Russia's going to be on board with that. I don't think Russia's going to be the one attacking Austria. I think that's fair, yeah. Um, they, I guess the other question is, is their position stronger than the English players? Is uh, Assuming that people do start countering this German to a sufficient degree. So the English player did pick up a build. They could potentially, as you mentioned, get France back on side. I think they're too spread out still. They can't be better than the Austrian. <laughs> That's my feeling. Yeah. Okay, so we put Austria in third, then I guess Russia in fourth? Or England in fourth? I would put England over Russia. Just because Russia's likely to get stuck on this line against the German, right? Yep, and if Austria chooses to attack Russia, then Russia just collapses, and there's no one in a position to make that decision for England's life. Yep. This is true. And uh, of our two micronations um, at the moment... Let's say I mean, France. I feel like Turkey is better, right? Because sure. France... Doesn't, whatever, man. I'll agree with you. Absolutely. <laughs> Turkey is way better. You're right. Okay. I mean, Turkey has a home center and France does not, is my reasoning here. Um it yeah, is... but France is the English Channel, which is next to his home center. So That's like... true, and they're likely to get supported back in. That's true as well. So, yeah, maybe you're right, actually. Maybe France is better. Whatever, man. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it does. we got to do these power rankings properly. Great. I'm glad. Uh... While you're finishing the power rankings, I'll be looking at the next moves. So. Okay. <laughs> Look, we can't do the bingo card on a non-longest uh, game. No, thing. but I'm, I'm not... it's not a bingo card. I'm just saying <laughs> uh, you, you're looking at the thing, I'm looking at some moves, having a good time. Okay, so here are our new power rankings. Germany first, Italy in second, Austria third, England fourth, Russia in fifth, France in sixth, Turkey in seventh, and I will very quickly move to the next phase to catch up with Ezio. <laughs> Spring yeah. 1907. God, I do not see this smart. many black movement arrows very often. Yeah, these people know what they're doing. Well, look at this. So the uh, where well, where do you want to look at first? I guess is the question. Let's first look at the east. I would say. Okay, this seems like the simpler front. Russia stands still, um, and Russia holds. 
Yeah, and Russia helps uh, Austria into Constantinople. So you're absolutely right. The Austrian wants to attack the Italian here, plus attack the Turk a little bit, I guess. <laughs> they can't attack the Turk more than a little bit. Um, and make up with the Russian. And the Russian was fine with that. But, like, I'm facing pressure from the German. I kind of need an ally here. <laughs> Well, he was facing pressure from the Germans, exactly. um, and he was suspected to need the support, and he got Austria out of the Black Sea. I think he's very happy. They probably even have an arrangement about getting supported into Bulgaria uh, probably to true. finish off the Turk. Yep. Um, and, like, I mean, now that the Russian is not under threat anymore, surely this may change things. <laughs> This might change Austria's dynamic, absolutely. Yeah, but for now, Russia's got to be happy about that Black Sea move in particular. Italy moving into Aegean and Ionian to contest these units in Turkey, I suppose. Uh, these moves from Italy feel quite pro-Austrian. Moving into Tyrolia, moving into Aegean, moving into Ionian, like, vacating Greece. But Austria is just like, nope. I want Trieste back. This is one of Yeah, and maybe this is just the thing where he's saying, I'm taking Trieste back, and then you move on with our lives. But maybe it's a sign of something to come, and we can expect to see it attacks on Greece. This is possible. Yep. Um, then shall we look at the West? <sighs> How about you start with the West? Okay. <laughs> so... Let's let's have a look over here at France first. Brest covers Paris, right? This is to prevent this move, Burgundy unit getting into Paris. But Burgundy does not cover it. English Channel goes to Brest, presumably... Well, actually, I guess this was probably all arranged between the Italian, the English player, and the French player, uh, saying, I won't attack Paris, so that you probably get into Brest. Italy goes to English Channel behind them, England goes to Mid-Atlantic Ocean behind them, Italy goes to Spain behind them, and there's just a big fleet shuffle over this side. If we look a bit further north, what we get is, well, I mean, Germany sets up this line of defense against the Italian units in Burgundy, but in the north, Germany gets pushed out of the North Sea because they don't really know what to do with it, it looks like. They just tap London, tap Edinburgh, and then try and get into position to take Norway over the other side. Um, suddenly their position doesn't... Well, they're going to get St. Petersburg and Norway, which is nice. But they don't look to be getting much past that, and they also look to be losing Brest. Yes, and they have given up their position against Russia, because they decided wisely that they're not going to make progress against Russia. Um, interestingly, if they had committed everything, so Prussia, Livonia, Silesia to Prussia, Munich to Silesia, then they would have had a guess between Moscow and Warsaw. Ukraine can only support hold one of them. Um, it's like, it's does Ukraine guess what Livonia is doing is the key? But this way they just keep, they get to force Italy out of Burgundy, which is the key. Yep. Uh, but they also may well, well, they probably will lose Paris at the same time, right? They're going to lose their German centers, not German centers, their French centers. Uh, but at the same time, they're going to gain probably St. Petersburg and Norway, which is like, I mean, I, I'm not sure I'd want that trade, but I'll take it if it's a 1910 game and you're in 1907. Just securing the entirety of Scandinavia is pretty damn good. <laughs> Always nice when the central power can sort of usurp the corner position of one of his neighbors. Yep. Absolutely. Or her neighbors. Their neighbors. Yep. Excuse me. So I think these are all dudes, so I'm not wrong, but they Yeah, they're out. they're all guys. They uh so they did some actually starter like pre game interviews on the DBN channel. That link will be in the description below if people want to check it out afterwards. Um they are quite interesting. The guy who played France is a former world champion in face-to-face, -face, so they're obviously not doing so well here. <laughs> but hey, that's because he got ganged up on at the start, so that just happens sometimes. Um, yeah. Yeah, so... Is there much more to talk about there? I want to see some more moves. Let's go ahead to Autumn 1907. 
Okay, Germany does not get St. Petersburg and Norway because the Russian puts the uh, the English player into St. Petersburg. And, oh, the poor French player. Oof. They tried so hard. Oof. To be fair, his last act was to say, no, screw you to the Italian. And keep Good way to finish it off. Mm. But yeah. That's, uh, clearly there was something... Oh my god, they supported Turkey into Greece. They Why is what? Turkey still on the board? <laughs> is Turkey building? He supported kind of small Turkey's building! Turkey is... Oh, what man. Turkey is going back up to two. Turkey hype. <laughs> it's like, the Turkish player does not have a chance of winning this. Uh, by any means. But it's kind of fantastic that they managed to get back up from one to two. Or he's an ostrich, just kill him! I don't know. Like, they clearly... Just support a Jin to Bulgaria, or a Romania to Bulgaria, whichever one you want, probably Romania to Bulgaria, and then support Ank to Smyrna. Yeah. And then, oops, it's all over. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I feel like that's probably the right choice here. Clearly, Austria wants more fleets on the board that are friendly to him, but... <sighs> Well, I mean, that has to be the reason, right? Because Austria can't contest Italy in the Mediterranean right now. And they're probably not going to get up to uh, Germany's supply center count without being able to contest the Mediterranean. So they've got to trust that Turkey will be a dutiful vassal, but giving someone their home centers back is always going to be a risk. Letting them build up to two is also going to be a risk when you've got a vassal state. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, look, Balky's tenacious. You gotta give him that. You absolutely have to, and like, uh, amazing respect to the Turkish player for <laughs> the like, they're building. They were in just Greece like two years ago. You remember the hundred year game where Turkey got stuck in Greece for forty years and couldn't build, like, never managed to get back on the board. Given forty years, Balky's done it in like three. Well, Conker's done it in, like, three. <laughs> he has yeah, different I mean, names. He hasn't the kept the same center for more than a year in a long time. This is true. Right, he's just been, like, fl flitting around between Constantinople and Greece. Yeah, it's, it's just well, amazing. I mean, <laughs> it's impressive. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's kind of odd that Austria would choose to dislodge the Russian from Smyrna here. Like... It feels like they were intending to give the Russian Bulgaria, the, the Italian screwed up that plan, but I, I really don't think the Russian would have been on board with giving the it, the Turk a build here, right? <laughs> you don't want to the I someplace. do not think he... Yeah, I do not think Russia wanted to see Turkey with a build here. Absolutely not. Yeah. Like, Speaking of builds, is England building... No, England's building two. They're only building one. Excuse me, not two. I thought England was building two for Mo, but he lost Norway. He did lose Norway. Um, I don't think Germany is building, because they lose Brest and they uh, they gain Norway. Um, so they're even as well, and they now have a Russian unit in Cilicia, plus the Italian unit in Burgundy to contend with. Their position... It doesn't look terrible still, um, especially... Like they they've still got plenty of pressure on Saint Petersburg. They still they they've not exactly got the corner position anymore. But with Russia and Austria fighting, that might be good enough. So we'll see where that goes. But it certainly looks a lot worse than it did when they were in North. When like they took North Sea for the first time, we were like or oh. yeah, when it looked like they were gonna kill England relatively quickly. Yep, massive but... comeback from England here. Um, and supported by the Italian player, it should be noted. Like, the Italian unit in Burgundy is so important. Cannot be underestimated. And I mean, the fleet, the Italian fleet in the English Channel supported England back into Brest. Yep. <laughs> and in the meantime, Italy is in Gascony and Burgundy, so, and is about to be the only one in control of the Mid Atlantic Ocean, meaning Italy will be the sole owner of Iberia and will be in the English Channel, therefore 
presumably the sole owner of the French centers. The- Italy is only at seven, but they're about to be the dominant power in the West. The downside for Italy is they just went down to six because they lost Greece and Trieste um, and only picked up Portugal. So they're going to have to choose the unit to disband. And if they disband off of the Eastern Front, then they are kind of, well, they're in trouble with the Austrian and the Turk uh, working together. Probably, yeah. The Turk is building a fleet. Probably. Yeah, that's tough. It is. I feel like you have to take Portugal off almost. That feels like the least valuable unit right now. Um, yeah, but that's going to be taking rid of that like, ocean, man. Yeah. I agree with like, you. You have to take it off. That sucks. There is the potential of you take off a gin, you say, okay, I'm going to do what I can to defend myself on that front. Just go for a blitz strategy in the West and see how much I can take. It's too early. But, yeah. You're going to lose too much. Still three years left in this game. Um, shall we go ahead to the builds? Let's see them. All right, builds. Bye bye, uh, Portugal. Hello, Fleet Con. Yep. Double army. Double army from Austria. Austria is suddenly back in this game as well. I know they still got a ways to go, but they do now have seven supply centers, which is only two behind the German current position. And England is counterbalancing that German to some extent. Yeah, to a pretty significant degree now. England's up to six in control of Norwegian North Sea. The um, Italian fleet in English Channel is presumably pretty pro-English at the moment. So yep. I think you can expect Germany to not make any gains and need to be tied down defending Belgium, Holland, Denmark, and Norway. So this may be a case of a game where the German is sort of at nine, and that's the mark that the Eastern powers are going to have to hit to try and overtake them. Um I don't see England making enough progress to contest that by themselves, like for themselves, um, especially since the Italian can just walk into Spain whenever they want. But the English player is going to have a significant impact on this board. <laughs> Shall we go ahead to the spring? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Spring 1908. Okay, so where do you want to look at first? Uh, let's look at the east, per usual. Yeah. This double retreat into Bulgaria. Oh, <laughs> as soon as Turkey gets back up, they get knocked down again. <laughs> this is... Uh... Yeah, Again, Austria didn't just take Constantinople, and they didn't support Constantinople into Aegean. Because if I'm Austria, right, I'm going to say I'm supporting Constantinople to Aegean. Yeah. Yeah, you're the one going out there, and then you can support me to Eastern Med. We can make our tactical improvement from there. But Because... instead, he agreed. You've got all okay. the power in this negotiation. You can just say, okay, I'm killing Constantinople if you don't move it out. Like, you probably don't want to say it in that manner, because they might just go, okay, well, screw you, then I'm staying Constantinople. But you can absolutely say Smyrna is supporting you out into the Aegean Sea here. Um, Yeah. And they decided not to. They may live to regret that. We will see. The uh, Ankara moves to Armenia. So the, the Austrian just completely leaving the Turkish homeland open. Just like, I do not care about this. I'm going for the Russian... And to be fair, it's pretty effective right now. They did get yeah. Romania. This Russian retreat into Bulgaria is just <sighs> so sad for Russia. <laughs> I mean, Russia can guarantee keeping Sevastopol by going Moscow support Ukraine to Sev. Um, and like maybe yes. they just thought, I want to blow up that Turkish unit. <laughs> I don't know what if they're doing that which I agree is the most likely order set by far, then Romania supports Galicia to Ukraine. Yep. Oops. Sevastopol is gone next year. Yeah, Russia has a, a guess here because of their move uh, to Bulgaria. Um, so, and I mean, on the other front, it looks like... Uh, it looks like Austria is trying to make up with Italy with, like, a support hold on Venice. <laughs> Not a very meaningful thing. But We're playing gunboat now, baby. 
Italy is putting Germany into Tyrolia, um, presumably with the hope of them helping the Italian in some way. While also being at war in the West and going after Paris. Yep. Uh, which did not work. Um, but the Italian convoyed the English unit from Yorkshire down to Picardy, which means now Paris is, is pretty likely to fall, I think. It's, um, Paris and or Belgium are both under pretty significant pressure. Yeah. In fact, Belgium is guaranteed if they want it, right? They can... No, it's not, because they... Uh, Paris... Might English Channel support Picardy to Belgium, Burgundy to Ruhr. Yeah, okay. I was thinking Paris could support Belgium to Picardy, but then you just have Gascony tap it, and that solves that yeah. problem. Um, so, yeah, in the north, very little happens apart from that. The English player and yeah. the German player bounce in Norway. Like Norway tries to get out into the English Channel, doesn't happen. Uh, so, uh, North Sea, but yeah. Yeah, sorry, North Sea. So... Man, if Norway bordered the English <laughs> Channel, dude, well, how crazy a game would that be? The British opening, you open the North Sea and English Channel, and then you can still support yourself to Norway with support? Mm. Yeah. That would be some interesting topology there. Yeah, well, you would need to have it be a warp zone. Yep. Just rip time and space a little bit. Well, but other than that, yeah, nothing happens in the West. It's a really bouncy move set. Should we go ahead to the full? Let's do it. All right, full 1908. And uh, Italy just stabs England here? Really? Why? Uh, and, okay, hang on. <laughs> uh, what is going on? Why did Austria put uh, Germany into Venice? Well... What a world we are living in. Okay, number one important thing on this board. Turkey goes back up to two. Go Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Turkey recaptures Smyrna. Sadly with the fleet, but hey. Well, I mean, they didn't have another unit to take it with. Yeah. <laughs> but you can still be sad that it's a fleet. Yeah. They have support into Bulgaria. They, like, correctly chose to go for their home center. Um... The, like, I guess maybe the, um, maybe the Austrian and the Turk had arranged a self-bounce in Bulgaria, because I don't see why the Austrian would move out of Aegean, uh, deliberately. Um, maybe they were worried about Greece tapping Bulgaria. Yeah, so they, well, yeah, I, I feel Fun like, they, yeah, they, this could be arranged to give them back Smyrna, it could be not arranged, we don't really know. Um, I'm pretty sure it was not a range. <laughs> I mean, if they wanted more fleets in the south, but eh, you, like, you don't have enough time to break Ion at this point. No. Nope. It's, it's fall 08, the game ends in fall 10. Um, yeah, so... So, yeah, I think this is... not going to change that much. <laughs> well, you know what Austria does have time for? Supporting Tyrolia and Venice. <laughs> Hell That's yeah. such an odd move. Uh, maybe if Venice had been staying in Venice, I could understand it because it retreats to Rome. But now the German is just going to be not get ridable. <laughs> well, Italy gets to build because they gained to... Gascony and Greece. They lost Venice. They gained uh, Spain and Greece. Yeah, the um. Uh, I said Gascony. Yes, yeah. excuse me, Spain and Greece. That's true because they stabbed the Brit. I don't know, I don't think stabbing the Brit was a smart choice, but it turns out that given the Austrian was helping the German, it actually turned out to be the correct choice to grab a build. Well, yeah, but they could have still just taken Paris. They could have. Or taken Belgium, as the case turned yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> or, like, or they could have taken Paris and Belgium if they'd managed, if, if they'd supported the Brit into, into Belgium from Picardy and w with English Channel, while they just took Paris from Burgundy. Yeah. Right? Like, that move would have just worked, but instead, this did not happen. I don't know why they, like, what I don't understand is why English Channel supported Burgundy into Picardy. Yeah. That it's just, just you disbanded the British army. Okay, cool. Now what? Now Britain gets to rebuild it at home, but, like, that's not helpful. There's no reason Maybe it why. Is. Maybe uh, it is. They Maybe don't, wait, they don't get to rebuild at home because they lost Spain. <laughs> Yeah, maybe so, really it's saying, I don't want you to have any more armies on the mainland. I want this to be just me and Germany. Now, the fact that Germany has 
four armies right there is a little concerning for me, and you've now moved your army from Burgundy, which is where you really want it, out. But, like, I don't know, maybe that's what he was thinking. I, do, I don't get it. Yeah, I, I really, really dislike this, especially so close to the end, where you're near that stage of, if someone likes you, you could win. <laughs> if someone yeah. dislikes you, they may stop you from winning. Um, this is... I agree, yeah. that definitely helps. And Munich is in Burgundy now. Which is uh-huh. like, that's, that's such a bad spot for the Italian compared to where they were a second ago. Plus, this is all combined with the fact that now Tyrolia is in Venice. Yeah. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Um, I mean, they were already second to Germany, right? So they're still just second to Germany. I mean, is, are they? Is Austria not? Mm, it's difficult to tell, I think. Austria letting the Turk regrow is also a problem. Austria letting the the <laughs> if the... Turkey was dead, Austria would be in first. Yeah, Turkey is not dead. Austria is therefore not in first. Yep, we have established why <laughs> the AT is such a hard alliance. Yeah, no, well, shall we go ahead to the winter here? Yeah, let's see the builds. Let's look at the builds here. Yep. So, winter like army I guess. Fleet Con? Wow, real shockers yep. there. <laughs> okay, well, we have our power rankings here. Obviously, Germany so, first. Germany is one. Austria or Italy is two. I think Austria is second. I think Italy is two overexposed now. I think so, too. I don't see Italy losing this zone that they've got of the six centers in the west. Uh, well, the, like Rome, Naples, Marseille, Spain, Portugal, Tunis, but they need more than that to win. They're, like, Germany is the bar right now. They're, Germany might lose Paris. It's certainly not it's guaranteed anymore. But... No, they just got the only friendly army that was on the yeah. mainland to help. So That's... now there's... They they're probably they're almost certainly in fact, not losing Paris. Sorry, basically... they'll, lose, they'll lose Venice most likely. So they will go back down to nine. But you have to hit that nine bar. And where is Italy going to get those last two from? It's Yeah, I mean, they need to get, like, Belgium. And, I mean, they do get Venice, right? Which is eight. Yeah. And then Which, nine actually they, Belgium. I believe through Paris method they do win against basically everyone, so on the tie break. So they do really just need to get those two, but can they hold Greece plus get Venice and like Trieste? It's a possibility. Austria needs to get two as well. And like Austria's two feel like they're much easier to get than Italy's two. <laughs> So yes. that's the pole plus Constantinople, and then you're done. Um, yeah, and they also, in the meantime, have a shot at Greece and Smyrna. Yeah, Austria is, like, oh. is definitely in second. And then we have Italy in third. Um, I forgot to take France off the board when they died. Well, I don't, yeah, but he so, wasn't dead until now, so I think it's when you update the power rankings, we check to see if he's dead. Okay. So and now we check that France is, in fact, dead. Rest in peace, also. Uh, gone. Yeah, and then England is in what fourth, and then Turkey's in fifth. No, Russia is in fifth. Russia Turkey's is in fifth, and Turkey is in sixth. I think. Although I could see, like, I feel like nah. Russia being eliminated is more likely than Turkey being eliminated. Yeah, but Russia's also more likely to quote win the game. But like, well, we have all game, yeah. that's <laughs> This is true. The like, difference between... He's got three units, he's got armies that can coordinate. The two fleets from Turkey are just so frustrating. You can't coordinate on anything, right? Ankara is impossible for you to conquer here. It's just not... I don't yep. know. No, I think I agree. So that is our new power rankings. Here we go. Germany in first, Austria second, Italy third, England fourth, Russia fifth, and Turkey down there in sixth with a goodbye to our friend in France. Let's move ahead to the spring of 1909. Perfect. Okay, well... Italy doesn't try to retake Venice. They do not. Austria doesn't try to defend Ankara. I feel these people don't know this game ends next year. (laughs) They definitely do. I feel like these people are playing as if this game goes on for a lot longer. Because if this game goes on for until 15 or whatever, yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of these moves make tons of sense. But you're ending the game's ending next year. Don't let, don't let Italy retake Ankara. How does this help you? Yeah, there is no way that letting... Well, I mean, they would not have taken Sevastopol if they hadn't. Well, Romania supports Ukraine, Ukraine Sevastopol actually would have worked here. 
It would have. You couldn't have guaranteed taking Sebastopol otherwise. But, like, the way it turned out, you, you could hold Ankara indefinitely here if you just keep bouncing it. So there's yep. no reason to trade one SC you can hold indefinitely for another SC that you could theoretically take without sacrificing the, the SC you can hold indefinitely. Yep. <laughs> I, I just think... I, I, I don't understand it at all. I guess... And then why are you pushing everything into Bohemian Tyrolia? You really expect you're going to be able to take Munich from the German in this position? That's your bet? Maybe that... So I... Wonder if they're coordinating strongly with the Italian right here, although you would expect them to push no, they probably wouldn't want to push Venice out right away. Because you want to get it out in the fall so it can't just walk into Naples or whatever. Um But like it does look like they're coordinating with the Italian now, because the Italian also moves their units against Germany. They take Brest and they put units in Gascony and Marseille. But like Man, I I feel like in the English position, I would be so annoyed at this Italian. Um, I mean, I'm taking Portugal. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Like, thanks, okay. But, like, you're, as England, you are the one who is stopping Germany from just immediately winning this game. Um, and Italy is now taking your sensors off you? They just blew up your unit that was trying to... <laughs> Keep yeah, that was fighting Germany, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I could definitely see England convoying Holland over to Edinburgh. Mm, and then that just ends the game there and then if that happens. Um, yep. The The question is, does England, like... How tough are they? Yeah, do they value throwing over, like, the extra position they could get by not giving those SCs to Germany? But really, the only people they're they're, they're just trying to beat Russia and Turkey at this point. There's no way they out uh, that they have more than anyone else. So they could frankly give away quite a lot and still probably manage this. Although not with the way that Turkey is being given SCs. Uh, but yeah. I mean, is there... Yeah, I mean, Germany is positioned on the North Sea. They have three there now. They're still not going to get through if England doesn't want them to get through. But uh, they can at least make England guess between North Sea or St. Petersburg at this point. So Yes. Unless, of course, Moscow supports Old St. Pete, but... Well, unclear. Moscow? Oh, yeah, yeah, they do have a unit in Moscow because they pushed themselves into Ukraine. Um, shall we move ahead to the fall? Yeah, let's see fall of 09. Okay, fall 1909. Here we go. And England is still working with the Italian. I mean, he's with Portugal still, but yeah, the they're... Italy is willing to support England and Belgium, and England says okay. Yeah, I mean, I really respect that from the English player. I, you have every reason, you know, you, you could absolutely get away with saying, I am just done with this right now. But they're still fighting to make sure that they have uh, as many SCs as possible at the end. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And Italy's pretty happy. Italy is still building. Yep, Italy takes Brest, they lose Portugal, they take Venice, they get one. Oh, um, they lose Greece, I'm an idiot. No, nope, oh, they don't build. Yeah, okay. Uh, Austria takes Greece off of them. They do not get a build, they are going to stay on seven. The German... That means that Austria builds. The German chooses to retreat to Tyrolia, which is interesting. I feel like you kind of want to just retreat to Apulia, seeing that the Italian isn't building, and harass them a bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, because we're at this end stage, Naples, or Ionian to Naples is just guaranteed, yeah. right? And, like, Austria is not going to support you into Venice, whereas Tyrolia, maybe you can defend Munich or something? I don't know. That's possible. Um... Germany goes, what, plus St. Petersburg and minus Venice, so they... St oh, and minus Belgium, minus so Belgium. they're going down one. So... Yeah, I expected. It's a surprisingly tight endgame. Um, we're going to have Austria on eight here, Italy on seven, uh, Germany on nine. And, and England at six? Yeah, and Italy... No, not uh, a... Sorry. It, it, no. They're I'm at done. five, because they lost Brest and St. Petersburg. But, um, yeah... 
Really, yeah. it's between those three, but both Austria and Italy beat Germany on the tiebreak. So if they can tie Germany in this last year, they will take the win. Yeah, it's a shame they're both going to be fighting each other. Yeah, that's the question, right? They, they're they absolutely both going to go for the win, and like they can really over only take centers off of each other, or maybe Turkey. I mean, could you imagine if Turkey wasn't in the game? Austria's position would be so much better. <laughs> yeah, we've said this before. Like we said this a million times before. This is but true. Turkey should going to stop Austria from winning this game. If uh, Austria, even if Austria had just held on to Ankara here and like taken Sevastopol via the gas, which admittedly wasn't guaranteed, um, they would be on nine. They would be equal with Germany right now, and that would be enough to win the game if they could hold on to it. So yeah, well. This is interesting. Shall we go into winter? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Winter okay. 19. Oh, Austria, you poor soul. <laughs> and minus fleet Skag, okay. And minus army Ukraine, okay. Yep. Germany is going to try and take back Belgium, but they're probably going to lose Paris as well, so... They are likely going to end on nine. I feel like that's. They could end on eight if uh, Russia taps Saint Petersburg and England takes Norway. Yeah, and I think Aus Austria. You desperately want Russia to go north. Say you're not going to attack War Moscow or Warsaw. You're going to like leave Sevastopol, and you're not going to use Galicia against him. So you say, hey, you can take Saint Petersburg. You tell England, hey. Russia's going to be taking St. Petersburg. You can take Norway. Yep. So that's valuable. England's going to get back to the North Sea, but yeah, Belgium just doesn't matter. Yep. I don't think Germany's going to end on nine. I think Germany's going to end on eight or seven. Yeah, I think so. It, Germany, their nine would require them to hold everything, lose Paris, and take Belgium, right? Their eight would be if they lose Norway. Their seven would be if Russia goes north and takes Saint Petersburg off them. Yeah. But I feel so... like as Russia, you're probably more annoyed at Austria than you are at Germany right now. Probably. And if you move out of Warsaw to go take Saint Petersburg, Austria almost certainly moves Galicia in behind you, right? So the most you do is if Austria leaves you alone, then maybe you tap St. Petersburg on the final turn of the game. To help England out? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. So I think it's going to come down to this. Does Conk want to give Austria centers? Yeah. And, like, Austria is on eight. So if, uh, if Russia taps St. Petersburg, England takes Norway and... Uh, Italy takes Paris, Germany takes Belgium, and Austria keeps everything they've got currently, Austria will win this game. Uh, well, actually, Italy taking Paris is, puts them on eight as well, so in that case, actually, Italy would win this game because they win all the tie breaks. Um, Portugal to Spain, though. Portugal to Spain is absolutely a possibility here. So, well, isn't, it gonna, isn't it a guarantee, considering all, all of the uh, trash that Italy has done to England this game? Absolutely, I think so. And, like, the, England is still working with the Italian in terms of taking Belgium, but that means that England is focused on centre count, and if England is focused on centre count, they still go to Spain. That's just... Yeah. So, yeah. This is... I, I mean... Italy has possibilities in Greece as well. They have a possibility in Trieste if maybe they can convince the German that the Austrian is more of a threat to win than they are. But there, that one's very dubious because the Austrian has a lot of units around that area. Um, yeah. If Austria supports Turkey into Ionian and cuts Albania, then Italy has to guess to cover Tunis or Naples as well. That's true. Um... Yep. So the the Turk may well take that, especially given that the Austrian basically gave them all their centers back in the first place. Yeah, but Austria's probably going to say, look, I'm going to support myself into Bulgaria, so you can't take Bulgaria from me. That's not a chance at a center. And I'm going to tap Albania and spray into Ionian. If you want the center, your best bet is going to come from the Ionian. 
Yep. Which is, of course, bollocks, because Conk just moves Ang to the Black Sea, and then he gets <laughs> there, but... Yep. Well... I, I don't guess... think Austria's going to get there because of Turkey. I think... I, I'm, I am confident Italy or Germany will win this game. My guess is going to be Germany. I mean, Austria could actually make a mad dash at Moscow and Warsaw and try and get those... They could go Romania up to Ukraine, Bohemia up to Cilicia, and then go for both That's at true. once. Um, which is their other option, but it does entirely rely on Turkey just not walking into their Balkan Not taking centers. Bulgaria. Yep. Yep, I mean, I don't think that's likely. I think Tur- I think Turkey's going to attack Bulgaria here. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Conk wants us to look at this game and say, hey guys, if you keep me alive, we'll help you out. I'll throw to you. Well... We'll see. Yeah, I think the the army build in particular is like if he was definitely not intending to do anything, it would either be a fleet or a wave. So, I guess we'll see what happens here. Shall we go ahead into the spring of the final year? Let's do it. Let's see how things pan out here. Yeah, Turkey did not stay outside. <laughs> Turkey gets supported into Greece by the Italian, takes Bulgaria at the same time, and moves into the Black Sea. sea. Oh, the Italy gets convoyed to Wales. They do. They convoy themselves to Wales. They're not going to bother trying to take Paris. And this They're is just take Liverpool. This and is... Portugal didn't tap Mars. Didn't tap Spain. Okay. Oh man. So they actually did have the English player on side still against the German. Maybe the English was so annoyed against about the German from earlier in the game that they were just like Italy, please kill like. Continue. So I'm not going to stop you from beating him. Yeah, and England is guaranteed to take Norway. England is guaranteed to Norway with double support. So yep, Norway is lost. And but now the Italian cannot take Paris, and they have lost Brest at the same time. This just feels like a mistake. They could have, like, if you're going to do this with uh, with making a run up Liverpool, why would you do it with your army here? Why not just keep your army there and try and take Paris at the same time? Well, if England is throwing, you can now take London, too. That's true. That's true. Maybe you're just 100% in on England giving you the win. But Yep. So if England will give you Liverpool and London, you lost Brest. You're not going to lose Spain because England is throwing to you. So you're going to be uh, plus Liverpool, plus London, minus Brest. So you're plus one, which puts you at eight. Germany, however, is plus Belgium and plus Brest. And then minus, minus Norway, Norway, which is plus one still, and Norway's already ahead of you. Yeah. This is just... No, you, I don't think they can make it. Um, they needed to... like taking The difference between taking an English center and taking a German center here is... Germany is... If you take a center off of Germany, it's net two. It's because... too big, yeah. Gascony, if Gascony supported Marseille to Burgundy, then we're in potentially a different world because then you can work together with England to do something like take Belgium, mm. right? You can still use Wales to take Liverpool, which is still putting you plus one, but then you can pressure elsewhere as well. Okay, wait, hold up. So Portugal can support Gascony to Brest. Yep, Okay. Uh, but then Paris can just support hold Brest. So you have to choose between either taking the sensor that England throws you in London or taking Brest back. So I don't think that works. Um, this is assuming England is throwing you at all. <laughs> which yeah, is it's possible like... that this convoy to Wales was completely a stab and he's just now going to try to convince England, hey, please just let me win. <laughs> that is not how you do it. Yeah, so... I think this phase we have just seen both Italy and Austria's chances go um, because of Italy <laughs> and Turkey, respectively. Um, admittedly, taking Paris wasn't as easy as I was initially thinking, because I was thinking, okay, you tap Burgundy, you tap Picardy, then you attack it too. But obviously, Picardy and Burgundy can tap Brest and Gascony. So you have to guess correctly on taking one of Burgundy or Picardy in the first place. But they could have done that here if they had supported uh, Marseille up to Burgundy. So, they kind of needed to go for that, <laughs> I think. It was so important to make sure that, that Germany lost the centre there. Um, 
or at least didn't take breast from you. Yep. But letting Germany take breast is gonna gonna be too much. Well, let's look at the fault. Let's see how things finally shake out in the final center okay. count. Does yeah. Turkey end the game on six? Actually, there's one other thing that's important. It's that um, Austria now has two units adjacent to Munich. And technically, if they could get the Russian to tap Cilicia, then they'd be able to take it. But I don't think that's going to happen, given they just tried to make a run at the uh, Russian centers. Russian centers. So... Yep. And Italy might not tap Burgundy. It seems likely Italy's going to tap Burgundy. I think Italy would tap Burgundy, but even so, it doesn't matter because Austria lost Greece and Bulgaria. So, Yep. Well, I mean, let's move ahead to the fall of 1910. I clicked that a slight bit early, but we uh, we have it here. And Yeah, the Atlantic Ocean took Spain. Yep. England's just trying to finish on as many centers as they can, uh, which, like, I'd props to him, but he gets... Out, I think Turkey beats him on centers. Turkey, of course, beats Turkey's at six. Yeah, Turkey gets to six off of this. Um, Austria just has to. I guess Austria went for the only play he could and tried to convince Turkey to back out of his centers, maybe, um, while taking Warsaw. But hoping that he could get into Munich. Didn't work. And he almost did, but he if he'd gone from Tyrolia, it would have actually worked. This is true. Oh, uh, and he will end... Well, he went minus three on that front, so he was still going to end on seven. But if Turkey had backed out, I think he had a shot at the win. Um, I don't know that it actually would have gotten there. I'm trying to count German centers now. Because Germany lost well, Norway, went plus Brest, plus Belgium. Right? That's the only difference. So Germany ended yeah. on ten. Um, yeah, he ended plus one. If Austria had taken... If Munich. Well, if Austria had taken Munich, then Germany would have ended on 9, Austria would have gone plus 2 and ended on 10. So, this is if... if, he, if oh, no. Okay, if Austria had both taken Munich and convinced Turkey to walk out of all of the centers. Yes. <laughs> but that's yes. a hard thing a to do. Um, and so, well, I mean, shall we go ahead to the winter here? Yeah, I mean, just see the final count. Yep, so... We have oh Germany on 10 centers. It's a three-way tie at second. <laughs> okay, Italy, Austria, and Turkey all tie for second place, although the tie like breaks, Turkey. breaks. <laughs> We were just yelling at the entire game. <laughs> just yelling at Turkey. Holy, come on, guys. Well, I mean, you've got to respect Conk for this, down to just Greece on one of his turns. Yeah, obviously you have respect to Conk, but like disrespect to everybody else in the game. Completely intended. What are you doing? Well, not disrespect Finish to everybody else in the off. game. Like, yeah, like, just, just like Russia and Germany. Austria. <laughs> Germany is very happy with this, I'm sure. Yeah, Germany's in love with Turkey for just eating all of these Austrian dots. It's amazing. <laughs> That's so good. Like, wow. Just finish them off. Well, I mean, I'll update the power rankings here, which to the end, uh, supply center count plus the tie break. Despite Conk managing to get back to six and tie with the Austrian and the Italian, he did pick his country before the Austrian or the Italian did, so he still comes in fourth overall. Uh, but massive congratulations to Kutisov in Germany. I think that key turning point was the, well, there were a couple of key turning points in this game, but that stab against England really put him ahead to a degree that the other side of the board couldn't end up matching, even when England spent the rest of the game fighting him and England and Italy got this coalition going. It was that move where they had the hostile support guaranteeing the retreat, yes. where they eliminated France so quickly. That move was just best move of the game by far. It was beautiful. I, we won't know, I guess, whether that was the German idea or the British idea, but whoever came up with that, you are incredible. That was so good, and I am absolutely going to make a puzzle out of that. Um. Yeah, that was just truly spectacular. I don't think I've seen that tactic anywhere. I don't think so either. Like, Hostile support is a thing that happens, but usually it's it's against a self bounce or something obvious, right? It's not to dislodge your own unit uh, because yeah, it's not your allies your unit. Own unit. Yeah, yeah, because you can't do it for your own units. The only right because most of these tactics we we analyze them and they come up with a one versus one games where really everything is about the tactics and you have to figure these things out. And this 
idea can never materialize in a one versus one game. It needs to have three different powers involved. And wow. Yeah. Look at that. Just absolutely beautiful play. And in these, I think th there were some absolutely uh, great attempts at, at getting on level with this German player, but leaving Turkey alive just ended up costing the Austrians so much. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that he had the chance to demolish the Turk at a number of opportunities, and if he had taken had, like, that... four different moves to just finish yeah. him. <laughs> Did the Turkish fleets ever do anything good for the Austrian? No. It's... I don't think they really did, not not when you get down to it. Um, so I guess you, you, have, you can absolutely take this, like, it's easy for us to say, seeing the result, you can absolutely take a position like this, give someone their home SCs back, and they just decide to give you the win because you were nice. But it turns out not everyone is that not kind of <laughs> What? You don't get... I'm sorry, there are some players where you can take this line with, absolutely. There are some people who really do care, they like you, they care about their reputation as being a nice person, and they want to people to know, hey, if you do something good for me, I'll do something good for you. There are players like that out there. Conk is not one of these players. Yep. Uh, so, one other thing I love about this game, nobody went for the thing that we usually see on top boards of, you know you can have the win because I like you the most. Everyone was playing for their maximum center counts at the end of this game. And, you know, absolute respect to that, especially England on that front, who, if I was in the English position, I probably just have ra would have raged at Italy and said, why did you blow up Piketty? I'm just going to give this away now. Yeah, but the good news is Germany won anyways, yeah. so Italy got punished. And it was like a, a pretty dominant win. He was four centers ahead. Yep. Absolutely. That's just... Like, we talked like this was close. It didn't end up being close center-wise. There were absolutely opportunities for these players to catch up, but they needed to do different things to... Uh... Yeah, it would have needed to be a, a coordination between two players to make it close. Yep. Right? England and Italy needed to coordinate to make it close. Turkey and Austria needed to coordinate to make it close, and none of these things happened. So... GG. So, yeah, absolutely great game. Um, and like, thank you for watching our video as per usual. I'll wrap it up here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this game. If you uh, are thinking about playing Diplomacy, anything like this, Nexus is a fantastic place to get involved. It's a uh, Discord server that serves a bunch of different websites. You can choose which one you want to play on up until like the finals where you have to play on Backstabber. Um, and you, it's open to all, anyone can join. So there'll be a link to that in the description below. Thanks again for watching. This has been myself and Ezio commentating the Nexus Season 5 Grand Finals, and congratulations to Kutisov.